The air, live on the Columbus River Dragons Radio Network. Tonight's game is brought to you by Fort Benning Harley-Davidson, Zelmo Zip-In, Country Inn and Suites, Kinetic Credit Union, Heckler & Coke, Pepsi-Cola, and b b Broadcasting. Now, let's head to the Harvey Lumber Broadcast booth for the start of the Fort Benning Harley-Davidson pregame show. And join the voice of the River Dragons, Zach DeBozart. Bozart. Bozart. Thank you very much, Brian Thomas. Welcome in high atop the Columbus Civic Center, where the River Dragons get ready to finish out their two games weekend set against the Binghamton Black Bears. As mentioned, I'm Zach DeBozart. Happy to have you along here. This should be a very fun and exciting Saturday night here in the Chattahoochee Valley. Last night's game was one for the record books, and we recap that all in our Inside the Lair pregame show guest with Levi Armstrong. He was down there at ice level. He'll tell you about everything that was going on with the team, the buzz, the excitement, and just how loud the crowd got. It's going to be an electric atmosphere in here once again. Already over 2,000 in the pre-sale. Walk-ups are rolling in, and it's a big night as well. Teddy Bear Toss here in the building. First goal the River Dragons scored tonight will rain a whole bunch of stuffed animals that will go to all sorts of different great causes around the Chattahoochee Valley. Hey, if you still got time, get on out anywhere, Dollar General, Walmart, wherever it might be. Just find your quick store along the way. Grab yourself a couple of stuffed animals and get yourself down here to the Civic Center. It's an extremely fun tradition, and we want to get the place loud, packed out, and, of course, a great donation going across to many different local area charities. We have a lot to get to in tonight's Fort Bending Harley-Davidson pregame show. Of course, recapping everything that happened last night, all the news, notes, not too many roster changes to tell you about. Uh, both teams are going to opt for a change in netminder. We already know that ahead of time. And you know what? After how crazy last night's game was, can't say we necessarily blame them either. So we'll talk about the goaltending matchup brought to you by Kinetic Credit Union and a whole lot more. Before we get to all that, though, it's time to go inside the lair. Today, our guest, number seven, Levi Armstrong, who tells us all about what it was like to be on that bench during one of the biggest comebacks in Columbus hockey history. Not only River Dragons history, Columbus hockey history. That's how big last night was. Going to be a lot of fun. We'll talk with Levi after this on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. You've always wanted to get on the open road, but your skills on a bike might need a little work. Well, we've got your back. The Riding Academy has now launched at Fort Benning Harley-Davidson. It's your chance to learn to ride for only $199. Unleash your soul on the open road. To schedule your class or to get on a waiting list for priority scheduling for future classes, go to FortBenningHD.com. Learn to ride for less than $200. The Fort Benning Harley-Davidson Riding Academy. FortBenningHD.com. In 1999, Watley Convenience Stores opened its first Zelmo Zip-In. Our first store was in Leesburg, Georgia, and followed quickly by our second store in the Columbus, Phoenix City area in 2000. Since then, the brand has grown to include 11 stores in the Chattahoochee Valley and southwest Georgia. Zelmo's is an anchor in the communities it operates in. Our managers, employees, and vendors are all an integral part of the neighborhoods and communities we serve. We are proud to call these areas home and plan to continue growing with and serving the community of West Georgia and East Alabama. Zelmo's, fueling life's passions. Oral and maxillofacial surgeons Mark Zwicky, Lee Allen practice a traditional scope of oral and maxillofacial surgery with over 60 years of combined expertise ranging from oral pathology to wisdom tooth removal. They perform a full range of dental implant and bone grafting procedures as well as non-invasive surgical facial cosmetic procedures. That level of expertise is why the River Dragons trust them. Call them in Columbus at 596 or in LaGrange at 884-2655. It's River Dragon season, and it's time to get out to a game. Visit Ticketmaster or the Civic Center box office to purchase tickets to the next game or any game left this season. Visit rdragons.com to check the schedule and stay up to date with everything River Dragons hockey. The defending Ignite Cup champions are looking to keep their winning ways, and you can be part of the best atmosphere in the FBHL to help make it happen. Purchase tickets online on Ticketmaster or skip the fees and visit the Columbus Civic Center box office during normal business hours. Get up and get loud, Columbus. The River Dragons are ready to roar. Welcome back to the Fort Benning Harley-Davidson pregame show. It's now time for Inside the Lair. Today our guest, number seven, Levi Armstrong. Levi, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me out. I appreciate it. Well, last night's game uh, was one I think fans are going to remember for quite some time. You and all your teammates being a part of it. Obviously, it had to be a real special third period on the bench. Uh, give us some idea of what was going on when all that was happening. Oh, man. Um, 
It was it was wild. Uh, it was everybody was positive the entire game, even when we were down. Um, you know, anytime there's a big play, the bench went crazy. Every every goal that was scored, everybody on the bench was uh, getting real close, hugging each other between intermissions. It was, you know, boys, we got this. Let's play our game. We we know we can come out and play, and and we're a strong team. And everybody believed it, and I think it really showed last night. You know, one thing I really got to say is most impressive. I mean, coming back from three goals is obviously something special. Yeah. But to do so, A, in one period, and B, when that three-goal deficit starts up in the first minute of the third. I mean, how many times do hockey players talk about, you know, first minute, last minute of a period, goals seem to count double. So 5-2, 50 seconds into the third, did you guys battle back? I mean, that's something. Yeah, um, it's definitely something that everybody talks about, the first minute and last minute of a game you never want to get scored on. Um it was something I've definitely never been a part of with a team uh, coming back like that and, and pulling out the win. Um, it was definitely something special, and it just goes to show uh, what we have in the locker room and what we can bring each night. I know the bench was obviously pretty positive, what you were saying, but when did you guys really start to feel like, oh, man, there's a chance to pull something out of this game, not even just a win? Because to be honest with you, I would have thought, hey, if we got to 5-5, lost it in OT, all right, we got a point, that's worth the effort we put in. But, I mean, when did you guys start to feel like, oh, this is not only winnable, but it's three pointsable? Yeah, um, as goofy as it sounds, I, I really think that the guys from the start believe that we could win the game. Um you know, they had a couple couple lucky bounces and, and got ahead and, and a lot of guys would shut down, but it was it was never a moment in the game where anybody was negative or, or doubting what our team could pull in and, and do. So um, I think just us buying in and, and truly believing that from warm-ups on um, and intermissions, you know, we talked and we noticed that, that a lot of their guys couldn't keep up with us. We're playing, you know, getting it deep, turning the D around, hitting. Um, all of that plays a factor into uh, pulling out a win like that. We're speaking with Levi Armstrong and Inside the Lair. Inside the Lair, as always, is brought to you by the Dragon's Den Pro Shop in the Columbus Ice Rink. Open on Wednesdays every single week for all your ice, ice skating and hockey needs. All right, Levi, that game was awesome, but now it's in the past. Now we got to look ahead. Binghamton Black Bears again. Last time we're playing them here in this building, and then we don't have to see them again until April. Last night, obviously, got a little chippy near the end. I think any time a team you know, blows a lead like that, it's going to get a little goofy. What kind of game are we expecting out there tonight? Um, I, I would expect something pretty similar to last night. It was pretty calm um, till the end there, like you said. Uh, just a physical game. I think we kind of – we don't know too much about the guys still. We've only seen them once. So we want to just kind of stick to our systems and, and have them play into our game. And, and I think that's kind of the plan tonight again. So now obviously tonight it is teddy bear toss night as well. So whoever's getting that first goal, maybe it's you, who knows? But I'm sure there's a little bit of a bounty on it uh, in the locker room, isn't there? Guy who scores that goal sends the Bears to the ice. Oh, yeah, I think uh, everybody wants to get that first one. Um, but I think it's just important that we, um, even though it's a big night and everybody wants to get that goal, we got to stick to uh, what we have drawn up in the locker room and what coach needs, and, and that goal will come depending on who it is. I know everybody will be pumped, so. You guys, you you personally have any teddy bear toss stories? Maybe scoring the goal, being on the ice for one in the past? No, this is uh, actually my first teddy bear toss game I've ever been a part of. So I'm pretty excited to see it uh, rain down a bunch of stuff to animals. And I, I think it's great what we're doing with that, you know. All right. Well, that's going to be exciting. Last song before we get you out of here. Uh, any shout out to the fans? Any message to the folks back home before we get you on the ice? Uh, yeah. Hi, mom and dad. And uh, to the fans, you know, thank you guys for all the support. It's something magical that you guys um, provide that helps helps the players be able to come in and perform at the level we do at, each night so without you guys it, it wouldn't be possible so thank you all right thanks so much for your time levi good luck out there yeah thank you levi armstrong on inside the lair stick around more fort benning harley davidson pregame show after this on the columbus river dragons radio network radio network progress it's the belief that your life should be easier that life should be fun and that the best is yet to come with us you have a provider who pours everything into bringing progress home and it's not just some big name in a far away glass tower that provider is here that provider is Bean. with local service and faster internet the only place you're going is forward and we're taking you there progress your beam your way
At Texas Roadhouse, we're famous for our hand-cut steaks, fall-off-the-bone ribs, made-from-scratch sides, ice-cold beer, and our irresistible fresh-baked bread. We take great care in everything we prepare, serve with big smiles at a great value. Visit us at 2970 North Lake Parkway in Columbus or call ahead seating at 706-323-6616. Curbside takeout available, too. We're proud to be your hometown favorite and are always focused on providing legendary food and legendary service. Texas Roadhouse house. Looking to update that hockey game day wardrobe? The best place to do that is to visit the online home for all River Dragons licensed apparel, rdragonsmerch.com. With new designs coming out all the time and special promotional and sale offers always live, there's always a reason to check back to the site and score some new gear. Plus, lots of fun souvenirs and other knickknacks that make great gifts for all sorts of occasions. So get there to rdragonsmerch.com, the official store for all team licensed apparel. That's rdragonsmerch.com. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons and Binghamton Black Bears getting themselves ready to play some hockey here on a Saturday night. I'm Zach DeBozar, joined once again here in the early proceedings by Mike V. Mike, uh, I think you might have known, but you missed a lot when you left. I was going to say, <laughs> and, and, and the, the weird thing about it was is that I have a friend of mine that, that was at the game and texted me and said, uh, you, you wouldn't believe it, but uh, 10 minutes left in the third period down by five. <laughs> And uh, down, and ended up coming back with a seven to five win. I was like, "Are you are you kidding me? Are you yeah. serious? You you you're messing with me? What a great what a great game for you to call! I would imagine oh, it was a lot of fun up here. I know the crew was buzzing, the whole crowd was buzzing. It was phenomenal, and I think that's definitely sold some tickets to get a bigger crowd here on Teddy Bear Toss Night. Expecting a crowd of twenty five hundred plus should be very exciting. Uh, taking a look at last night's game, River Dragons got on the board first with Austin Doe, and then it was a bit of a give and take, punch and punch back. Binghamton got Nikita Ivashkin and Colin Fitzgerald. I think that goal might have been since uh, rechanged to uh, Gino D'Angelo. Uh, we were talking about some scoring changes in advance of today's game. But uh, either way, Binghamton had tied it up and then taken the lead 238 into the second period. 2 1 Binghamton sat despite being doubled up in shots for most of the night. River Dragons got another one with Austin Doe, a great deflection. But then before the period ended, Binghamton sitting 3 uh, 3 2, 4 2 with both Kyle Powell and Ivashkin, and then Ivashkin with 50 seconds into the third period, gone. 5-2 Binghamton, and you thought, oh, man, those goals yeah. in the first minute, they just kill you. River Dragons had resolve, and Levi Armstrong said, you know, as, as weird as it might sound, nobody got down on that bench. They all stayed positive, and it paid off. Three straight power play goals. Noah Doyle with one second left on the man advantage at 6.23. Josh Petrantonio tapped one in on the back door at 10.11. Jake Krupp then put a rebound home at 16.35. And at that rate, there's, uh, what, maybe three and a half minutes left? You're thinking, all right, game's destined for overtime now. We're at least going to get a point out of this. No, River Dragons weren't done. Austin Doe finished off his hat trick, 19.02 mark. And then the new guy, Adam Vanelli, picks up an empty netter for his first as a River Dragon. 7-5 Columbus, undoing a three-goal deficit with 19.10 left in the third and winning by two, not going to overtime. I can recall a game against Elmira on a Sunday afternoon where they were down 4-1 and then won that game in overtime heading into the third, down 4-1. But to be down by three early into the third and win in regulation, I think one of the biggest comebacks in River Dragons history, and I know you know a thing or two about Columbus hockey history, what are some of the things that that might uh, stack up to on the Cottonmouth side of things? You know, immediately after getting that text last night and then you know, on, the, on my drive back, to Alabama, I ended up thinking, and I said, you know, I, I remember a game. It was uh, Columbus against Huntsville in the Central Hockey League, and Jerome Bouchard was a member of that of that team. And five nothing, first period, Oof. pull the goalie, you know. Get, and like I told you before, I mean, you know, a lot of people when it's five nothing at, at the end of the first intermission, you go to the concession stands. Do I want to buy the beer here, or should we just take the, you know, take it to the <laughs> pub? And uh, no, anybody that left was in problems because the team slowly chipped back and ended up winning a 6-5 or 7-5. And it, it was just, I can't remember the exact score, but I do remember it was the, the biggest comeback that I that I saw myself, and it was involved calling a game in this building. It was a it was a tremendous feat, just like 
I know how you must have felt last night. Yeah, just unbelievable. A lot of fun to call that one. And I know the crowd that was in attendance, uh, those that stuck around for that third period, because not, not many people left. I, I understand. At 5-2, you think, oh, man, there it goes. But, man, that team had resolved. That team battled. The, the, the crowd that stayed, which was a lot of them, they got loud. They were behind their guys, and there was an energy in this building that was a lot of fun. It definitely spurred the team to those three points. 7-5, you know, River Dragons won last night. Now we look ahead to tonight's game against the Binghamton Black Bears. Teddy Bear toss night here, Mike. Should be a lot of fun. you, you got to love that. You know, if you're on the uh, on the uh, on the River Dragons side of things, you want to see that first goal go to you, and, and, and hopefully it isn't like – I'm not, I'm not even going to say it because you know what? The announcer's curse – <laughs> that lays that lays a long time, so I won't even tell that story. But the the thing is, is that the guys get pumped up for that, oh, yeah. and it's one of the greatest things because all of those teddy bears that people donate, and some people go way out. I mean, I've seen some fans come in here, and I'm like, that that's a hundred. That, that uh, teddy bear is a hundred for sure. I have seen a couple yeah. that take two hands to carry. Let me put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, the thing is, is that they go to the, all the young the youngsters that are in need at time of crisis of uh, Department of Public Safety here in the Chattahoochee Valley. And so they were able to do that, and that's a great thing. It is indeed. First goal of the game. Teddy Bears will rain down on the ice here on Teddy Bear Toss Night. River Dragons and Black Bears starting up about 15 minutes or so from now. Let's take a break. When we come back, we take a look around the league. Zelmo zipping. It's a lot of fun last night. We've already got games underway here on a Saturday night in the Fed. I'll tell you all about that and more after this on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Country Inn and Suites by Radisson, you'll enjoy comfortable accommodations close to Columbus State University, Fort Benning, and of course, the River Dragons games. Conveniently located at 1720 Fountain Court in Columbus, you'll be minutes away from all your favorite Columbus destinations. Free high-speed Wi-Fi and hot breakfast always available too. So whether you're staying for business or for pleasure, make your next stay in Columbus a comfortable one at the official hotel partner of the River Dragons. Country Inn and Suites by Radisson. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola a journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Is that the sound of an ooey, gooey, cheesy, crunchy slice of P-I-Z-Z-A? <laughs> Obviously, but as good as that sounds, we think it can get even better. Oh yeah, that's the sound of a freshly opened, fizz-filled Pepsi. The only thing that can take this flavor medley of crunchy dough, mouth-watering cheese, and savory sauce to the next level. How about another bite? Pepsi and pizza sound like a match made in heaven and taste even better. Pizza, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center, River Dragons and Black Bears, about 10 or so minutes away from dropping puck to ice. Till then, we're on the Fort Benning Harley-Davidson pregame show. I'm Zach DeBozart. He's Mike V. We were going to give you the around the league, but hey, we got the starting lineups up here a little bit earlier this time today. So why don't we throw a little audible and start up with that. First, for the Binghamton Black Bears, opponents lineups on the River Dragons radio network brought to you by Victory Land Casino over the border in Shorter, Alabama. As we mentioned, both teams going with a change in net tonight. So, entering the pipes for Binghamton, number 60, Harley White, West Broom, Quebec native, 2-2 two two record, 881 save percentage, and a 416 goals against average. Defense in front of him, in fact, I think the starting five is the exact same for Rod Davidson here in tonight's game. Number 88, Igor Nosov, and number 27, Kyle Powell, man, the blue lines, and it's the big line, Josh Newberg in the middle of Kyle Stevens and Nikita Ivashkin. Uh, Mike, last night, Ivashkin had a hat trick, Austin Doe had a hat trick. It was obviously goals of plenty, not only in this game, but league wide. Not too often you get two hat tricks in a game, and Ivashkin, for as great a goal scorer as he is, uh, probably felt you know a, a little bit upset because obviously the team blew a lead. He can't really you know feel good about his hat trick because the team lost there. So uh, I expect that line to come out even hungrier, which is crazy to say considering how good they were last night. And with Oveshkin, one of the things that we talked about last night, he's always a danger with that stretch patch that they were u utilizing. And mm -hmm. obviously, I am wondering if the adjustments made to kind of help that out to see if you can slow that guy down, which is almost impossible. Yeah, we shall see. No other changes in the lineup, so the same unit and the same lineup seats that were in for Binghamton will remain for this one. The only change is, again, Harley White in for Joe Shepard. 
Now we take a look at the River Dragons starting lineup brought to you by Fort Benning Harley-Davidson. Go see Brett Posey and the guys. 3230 Williams Road on the north side of Columbus. In net, as we mentioned, again, the change in netminder. Number 31, it is Bailey McBurney, the Beverly, Massachusetts native. A 1-2-1 one, one record, 917 save percentage, 3.14 goals against average. The defense in front of him, number 26, Adam Vanelli. Number 27, Paul Frejot. It was a pretty good tandem in last night's game. Now that you're seeing a more steady decor with a couple of additions uh, on the back end, you're seeing guys being more frequently paired together. And Vanelli and Frejot, I thought, were very good puck-moving defensemen together. Very effective tandem for Jerome Bichard. The forward unit in front of those three, Josh Petrantonio and Austin Doe on the wings, Hunter Bersani, the centerman. And depending on how the wings line up, you can have hat-trick guy against hat-trick guy going back to last <laughs> night right. on the opening draw with Austin Doe and Nikita Ivashkin. Just, I know we keep remarking on it, but what a game last night. Right? I, you have to. I mean, it, it, those, those are the games you don't forget. Those are the games that, that if it was your first hockey game you ever came, you got hooked. Oh, You're yeah. You're going to come back. Absolutely it is. Uh, no other changes, scratches, or otherwise for the River Dragons. Just the change in netminder. Jared Rutledge, the backup tonight for Bailey McBurney. That's your starting lineup. Let's take a break. When we come back, then we'll look around the FPHL. Brought to you by Zelmos after this on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Work. You've always wanted to get on the open road. But your skills on a bike might need a little work. Well, we've got your back. The Riding Academy has now launched at Fort Benning Harley-Davidson. It's your chance to learn to ride for only $199. Unleash your soul on the open road. To schedule your class or to get on a waiting list for priority scheduling for future classes, go to FortBenningHD.com. Learn to ride for less than 200 bucks. The Fort Benning Harley-Davidson Riding Academy. FortBenningHD.com. The benefits of a Kinetic membership extend far beyond convenient banking solutions, competitive rates, and financial advice. Kinetic Credit Union focuses on the unique needs of our members while supporting and improving their lives. At Kinetic Credit Union, they recognize that your financial goals are unique. That's why we're offering the Smart Steps Financial Education Program, a personalized learning experience to help you plan around your individual financial situation and aspirations. Kinetic Credit Union. Before you know it, the weather will get warmer and baseball will be right around the corner. So book your summer weekends early by purchasing a Flight Club membership with the Columbus Jetta Hoots. Flight Club members receive tickets to every home game at Golden Park as the Hoots try and go back to the championship series in 2022. Plus, more awesome perks for all of our members. Visit GoHoots.com to get started on securing your membership for the 2022 Sunbelt Baseball League season. Or call the offices at 706-507-4625. Back here at the Columbus Civic Center, Fort Bending Harley-Davidson Show. I'm Zach DeBozart. He's Mike V. And it's time to take a look around the FBHL. Brought to you by Zelmo Zippin. Zelmo's fueling life's passions. First off, in tonight's game, the schedule is very interesting. You've got the one versus seven in Delaware at Watertown. Then you've got two games where the teams are dead even in terms of points percentage. Here, Binghamton Columbus, 20 points each on 13 games played. Right now, Binghamton owns the tiebreaker in terms of total wins. They have seven, a 7-6-0 seven, and oh record versus a 6-5-2 and two record for Columbus. But then for Port Huron and Carolina, 18 points on 13 games, both 6-6-1, six, six and one, both with five regulation wins. If the playoffs were to be decided by that, which obviously they won't, it would come down to goal differential. Where Port Huron is negative two, Carolina is negative three. <laughs> that tells you how close these teams are and should be a very exciting night of Fed League hockey here on a Saturday night. Last night was very exciting. Every game had at least 11 goals in it, Mike. Carolina 6-5 winners, Watertown 7-4 winners, and Columbus 7-5 winners. 11, 11, and 12 across three games. Will we see as much offensive output? Well, let's find out because we're already into a game at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. It was a 6.05 puck drop over there in North Carolina. They are eight minutes into the second period and Port Huron has taken the lead. one nothing. a goal very recently by Austin Federley just 30 seconds ago. Larry Vartiainen and Caleb Williams pick up the assist. Interestingly, Caleb Johnson, or excuse me, Alex Johnson has been ejected from this game on a boarding major and a game misconduct, and that goal was scored four minutes later, so it was a four-on-four -four goal because Talapov put himself in the box for tripping. So while killing off a major, Port Huron got the rest of it done by drawing a penalty and then scored a goal four-on-four -four as they lead Carolina up one nothing, but down one of their more veteran defensemen and Alex Johnson for the rest of the game. 
looking over at the Watertown Municipal Ice Arena. They are just about to start. Delaware at Watertown. Jacob Caffrey, former River Dragon, gets the start for Delaware tonight. Gregory Hussey is over on the other side. Puck drop in that game about five minutes away. And then, of course, here in Columbus, Binghamton at Columbus on Teddy Bear Toss Night. You know what's interesting, Mike? Carolina is also having a Teddy Bear Toss Night. They're halfway through that game, and it's one nothing Port Huron. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, you want to be careful on saying certain things, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, the last thing you want to do is have to wait till the end of the game to toss those because you didn't put one in. But, uh, you know, hopefully that's not going to happen for them, and it's not going to happen right here at the Columbus Civic Center. Certainly hope not. That's your Zelmo zip and look around the league. Zelmo is the official fuel provider of the Columbus River Dragons. Quickly, Southern Hockey scoreboard. Roanoke at Macon. They're in the second period, still scoreless. Then all these games in the central time zone, 8 o'clock to 8.15 starts. Huntsville at Evansville, Birmingham at Vermilion County, Pensacola at Quad City, and Knoxville at Peoria. Let's take a break. When we come back, we finish out the show and get ready for the Sun South John Deere first period after this on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. To copy when you can own the real thing. At Heckler & Koch, the foundation for everything we do is an unswerving commitment to excellence. Shooters of Columbus at 4445 Milton Road is your local area premium stocking dealer for all your favorite Heckler & Koch products. They also have an indoor range with rentals available, from rifles and pistols to ammo and holsters. There's no better choice in the firearm business than Heckler & Koch. Gulf Eagle Supply specializes in servicing the professional roofing contractor and also provides a variety of products and services to the homeowner, building owner, architect, and general contractor. Our goal to the contractor is not only to provide competitive material pricing, but also to help them build their business and assist in their success. We do this with knowledgeable sales personnel and through our core values. As we say, Gulf Eagle, we got a solution for that. Call us today at 706-550-1555. Gulf Eagle Supply. Vectorply is a world leader in development, manufacturing, and distribution of composite reinforcement materials for any and all projects you might have. Headquartered right here in Phoenix City, Vectorply prides itself on providing superior and timely customer service for all their customers' inquiries. No project is too big or too small for Vectorply. For more information on what they can do for you and your project, visit Vectorply.com. That's V-E-C-T-O-R-P-L-Y.com. And get started on your next big project today. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. Starting lineups have been announced. The teams are on their respective blue lines. There's not much left to do but play some hockey. Cannot wait to get this one underway. The Fort Benning Harley-Davidson pregame show is over. When we come back, myself and Mike V will take you through the Sun South John Deere first period. It's going to be a blast. If last night was any indication, you're not going to want to go anywhere. Columbus and Binghamton, game two of two, comes up after this on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. You've been listening to the Fort Benning Harley-Davidson pregame show on 106.9 Really Rocks. The call of the game is just moments away after we pause for a short break on the River Dragons broadcast network. Let Shred Away, a division of the Overby Company, take care of all your document shredding needs. We can design a custom shredding program for your business today. No need to purchase equipment, no maintenance expenses, no need to prepare records for destruction, increase employee productivity, increase security, no worry. Was it really destroyed? Right now, all new customers can receive 10% off. Shred Away, a division of the Overby Company, locally owned and operated in downtown Columbus. That's Shred Away, 706-577-9668. At Southern States Bank, the Common Sense Bank, we're a true community bank that supports the places we serve. Our people live, work, and play in your community. And you will find us cheering for the River Dragons right alongside you in the stands. With convenient locations throughout Alabama and Georgia, we're never too far away to handle any of your financial concerns. Call, click, or come by and see how we can help you make sense out of your banking. Visit us online at southernstatesbank.net. Southern States Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender in MLS number 410611. Dressing for success is as easy as 123 with Wade Cleaners. Drop off your garment at any one of their five convenient branches or call their valet manager to pick them up. Go do something fun. Walk your dog, eat a hot fudge sundae or go to a movie. Leave the dirty laundry to them. Pick up your professionally clean garments or have them delivered at no additional charge to your home or office. Yes, you too can dress for success with Wade Cleaners. Oh, and uh, 
Uh, don't forget the little people as you move up in the world. Stay up to date with everything Columbus River Dragons by following the team on social media. Stay in the know with all the team news on Facebook and Instagram. Get live in-game updates via Twitter. And of course, catch every game on the YouTube page. Following is easy. Search at C underscore River Dragons on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. It's never been easier to stay in the loop with your favorite hockey team. So what's stopping you? Drop us a fun comment or send us a message. And we may just feature you on the feeds. That's C underscore River Dragons on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. It's time for River Dragons Hockey. Tonight's game is brought to you by Sun South, John Deere, Houston Clinic, Burger King, West Georgia Oral and Facial Surgery, Country Inn and Suites, Buffalo Rock, Pepsi Cola, John Emerald Distilling, Wade Cleaners, and PMB Broadcasting. Now, let's start the game with the voice of River Dragons Hockey, Zach DeBozar. Thank you very much, Brian Thomas, here in the Harvey Lumber Broadcast booth in the Columbus Civic Center. It is hockey time on the Chattahoochee River Dragons and Binghamton Black Bears in Game number two of this two-game set. Bailey McBurney is over to our left. The River Dragons in their blackout Saturday look. Black jerseys, helmets, and pants with gray numbers and teal trim and the gray blacked out logo on the chest. They go left to right. Over to our right, it is Harley White and the Black Bears in the same jerseys as last night. White primaries, Sash Binghamton in green. Black helmets, secondaries, green numbers. They go right to left. Newberg, Bersani on the draw. We are underway. Here in the Sun South, John Deere first period. Binghamton wins it and will flip it into the zone. Frazier from behind the net, bobbled it and then moved it around on the far boards. A pass, hits a man in stride, sending it up to the right wing. Petra Antonio will chip this one into the zone. Behind the net, White slows it up, rims this one around. Ivashkin on it there, he takes a big check. Now the puck falls free for Doe for a moment, then Powell quickly knocked it back into that scrum. Behind the net, Doe has it. A pass, left circle, Bersani shot. That one just went wide. Rebound back door, and Doe was canceled out by a sliding Kyle Powell. Left point, nice hold in there by Frazio. That one deflected and a good save. Had to be made there by White. Great tip by Doe. He has got such a hot stick. Four-game goal streak right now for Doe. What a fantastic start to the River Dragons attack. White from behind the net. Ooh, he misplayed that puck off the bounce, but was able to just poke check it farther into the near side corner. And now Newberg will flip this one to safety for Binghamton. Gloved out of the air by Grade, but he can't go into the zone. His finishing his check was Bersani. He'll play that one in on net, and now it's played off for Nosov. Nosov, excuse me, just about a minute gone here in the first. Peterson tried to take that pass on the left wing side. Powell holding up MJ Graham as he intercepted it. Pass to Williamson, goes through his stick. Ozelinch, left wing circle, plays it off the corner boards to MJ Graham. Graham gets the legs moving, now cycles it back down the half wall. Williamson to Krupp, backhand across. Graham wasn't there on the timing route. Right circle, he'll fire though. That one blocked in front by Nosov. Jagger Williamson had it to the half wall. Nobody there in a black jersey. And Williamson has to take it back in the neutral zone off of the flip, off of his stick though. And Ozelinch, he puts that one back out towards safety. And Jay Krupp will find it here. 18-22 to go in the first. Williamson, he takes a big check there from Peterson. And now back behind the goal line. It'll be found by Colin Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald plays that one ahead, goes off a body. It's on net for McBurney. He sticks it there, and it'll be collected by the defense. Up that far wall, intercepted. Shalafu fired a shot wide of the glove hand. Fitzgerald lets one go, swept to the middle by Holesi, and good job by the Columbus defense to take it away. Noah Doyle with a head full of steam. He'll take it left wing side, chip it into the zone. White, very aggressive, coming out of his net, nearly turned over, but that puck actually didn't get to Levi Armstrong. Now here comes Fitzgerald back the other way. Binghamton's got numbers, four on three. They try a pass up in the air, falls into the high slot, and then chipped out of danger by Columbus. They head off for a change, 17.40 to go in the first. Nice start for the River Dragons. They are really picked up the pace or picking up where they left off last night. Nolan moves this one up to Petrantonio. Open right wing. He'll shoot it in from the red line. White, another puck touch there at the side of his net. Doe lets it go to the left point, Bersani, who sweeps it back into that corner. Austin Doe with it on the backhand. A little bit too far for himself. Powell clashes with his stick, and it gets out towards center. Frazier dumps it in. Columbus has to touch up on the delayed offsides. Binghamton's got some time with this puck. Yellowney overskated it, but then it also went past the man at the right point, Vanelli. He'll give back a little D to D to Frazio. Now here comes Petra Antonio, chip ahead. He got his feet taken out from him there. Crowd wants a call, none coming, and the puck falls into the Binghamton zone. White, another puck touch, and behind it goes for Powell. Harley White, very adamant to get active with that puck early. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Very aggressive netminder. We'll see how that unfolds throughout the night. 
Oganesov with this puck in his own end, retreating. Now chips it ahead. Kyle Powell open left wing. He'll dump it in from the red line. Rimmed around. Too fast for McBurney. And it'll be found on the far wall there by Stevens. Stevens involved in a board battle. It chips out deeper into the corner far side. Williamson going around. Now up ahead to the right wing. Here's MJ Graham. Graham being headed off by Fitzgerald. Graham uses the speed. Has an angle around him but quickly runs out of space and is slammed there into the corner boards. This one moved up the wall. Gray trying to hold that one in. He does, but only to the hash marks. Newberg to Stevens, and Binghamton's out towards center. This one off the glass. No icing. Didn't have the legs to get there. And Ozelinch takes his time behind the net. Gives it up to Gray. 16-10 to go here in the first. Man, you got to keep your eye out there on number eight. Uh-oh, look out. Jagger Williamson got turned over in the zone. Here is Ivashkin with the puck. Jake Gray, good job keeping his stick in the way there and preventing him from getting towards center. Ivashkin caught an edge as he was trying to spin a ram away from him. Now here's Fitzgerald with it at the left point. He couldn't fire a shot. Puck fell off his stick. Side of the net to Ivashkin. Couldn't wrap it around. Didn't have the reach to do it. Krupp lays that one off at the bottom of the circles. Dangerous pass across the slot, but nobody there to challenge grade. MJ Graham is pinched there by Fitzgerald. Now all of a sudden Columbus having a tough time getting out of their own zone. Yeah, a little bit more pressure on that line that came in for the uh, for Binghamton. But right now, time to reset things and keep doing what you're doing, which is working hard. Darling with this puck in his own end. Tries to chip it ahead. That one hopped over the stick of Peterson. And now here's Brad Nolan with some speed ahead. Nolan just in on sides on the drop. Armstrong shot deflected and wide of the glove hand on Harley White. This one gets chipped ahead. Doyle lost it on the hand, but he'll touch it, so no hand pass. Moves it forward closer to the red line. It's backhanded into the zone by Ant or Schmidt. excuse me. Big yeah. hit lined up in the corners. Levi Armstrong just took down EJ Darling. And Darling a little slow to get up, but Binghamton has the puck trying to go back the other way. Fitzgerald from the red line moves it in. Right wing circle. Shot from Holesi. And a stick save made there by McBurney. Rebound cleared out of the slot. Darling was slow to get up and just went straight over to the bench. He's hurting a little bit there. Armstrong tried to put that one in, inadvertently put it off the linesman. And Binghamton will take possession right at their own blue line, but retreat back to their own end. Let's go, Dragons. The chance starting up here by Dana Barker. It's been a relatively quiet game for him so far compared to last night. Now here's three on one. Here's Bersani. Petrantonio scores! Josh Petrantonio, left wing circle, brings the Teddy Bears to the ice. Well, there you go. That's just perfect puck execution and a great shot. Just let it go and beat him up on the uh, short side. And as you see, it's raining Teddy Bears in Columbus tonight. It is indeed. Five minutes and 32 seconds is all it took for the Teddy Bears to get down to the ice. Josh Petrantonio, you saw the play develop too, a three-on-one. Not really a turnover, just guys in, synchron in synchronization finding the way to get back to the blue line, and they hit with numbers. Bersani to the left circle. Petrantonio stopped up, saw his angle, and he fires it home for what's going to be his sixth goal of the year. Now, here's the interesting thing, Mike, is because... I think this is going to be our second face-off of the game. Didn't we, have this? Go, yeah. Didn't we have this in the first period where we were just going end-to-end? -end? It was just so quick, so fast. And here, very first play, while it took a while, has resulted in the Teddy Bears thrown onto the ice. And there we see a couple of the big ones making their way from the very top all the way down here to the bottom. Well, last night in the first period, we had about a seven-minute stretch with no, no whistles at all. It was incredible. And even on a, on, a, on a four and four, which ended up being killed while there was no whistle. You know, one thing you notice, though, is that that Ovechkin line gave the problems to the River Dragon. As soon as the switch was made, all of a sudden, here they come back. And uh, Columbus gets their number one line out there, and they make them pay. Petra Antonio, Bersani should pick up an assist. And actually, uh, while we're waiting here for the Bears to be cleaned up and everybody in a black jersey getting involved, you see Jared Rutledge in the ball cap. He's catching a few down there in the corner, helping out some of the sweepers. They're getting them all in big piles, and we'll be cleaning them up here in a little bit. So tell you what, why don't we use this time uh, to take 30 seconds. We'll call this uh, one of our media timeouts, even though we'll end up taking one later. Uh, we'll take 30 seconds when we come back. We'll tell you about the goal. We'll hopefully get these bears cleaned up off the ice, all going to a great cause, and big happy feelings here in Columbus as the River Dragons are up 1-0. 14.28 to go on the first. We'll take 30 seconds to be back on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. 
benefits of a Kinetic membership extend far beyond convenient banking solutions, competitive rates, and financial advice. Kinetic Credit Union focuses on the unique needs of our members while supporting and improving their lives. At Kinetic Credit Union, they recognize that your financial goals are unique. That's why we're offering the Smart Steps Financial Education Program, a personalized learning experience to help you plan around your individual financial situation and aspirations. Kinetic Credit Union. Back here in Columbus, most of the piles, the big ones at least, are up and just finishing up the last couple here as the River Dragons have already sent the teddy bears down to the ice. 532 into tonight's contest. Josh Petrantonio gets things going first with the goal. For those of you playing along with us at home, Hunter Bersani does pick up the assist. Petrantonio, his sixth goal of the year, now up to 15 points, and Hunter Bersani now breaks the double-digit barrier. That sixth assist gives him 10 points on the year. I'm Zach DeBozart. He's Mike V. Mike, you know, they always talk about, you know, the teddy bear toss. It's a lot of fun. But one unfortunate maybe side effect is this is basically a timeout for Binghamton to yeah. recollect their thoughts. And, you know, the River Dragons are out there doing their part, helping out to clean. But now Binghamton is really, you know, got the resolve. They didn't have to worry about maybe getting too rattled. If they've composed themselves enough, I mean, for them, that goal probably doesn't really mean a whole lot considering how much hockey we still have left to play. Oh, yeah, and, you know, the old saying is you got to score a goal to win a game anyway. So, I mean, they're not looking to come out here to not, not to score any. One thing I, can, I do have to make a comment on with these teddy bears, with the amount of teddy bears that I see and the amount of people in this crowd, I think everybody brought one, it looks like, <laughs> at least close. Well, we were expecting a crowd close to 2,500, if not over. Had about 2,000 on pre-sale. Things were going well. I think, obviously, last night's game definitely sold some tickets. Yeah. People wanted to come back. And now here, being part of one of the greatest traditions in hockey, so much fun. The final bag getting off the ice. Now those will all be counted up, donated, and we can get back to playing some hockey. Petra Antonio's goal. We'll hear it from Dana Barker once we drop the puck. Teams will reset themselves. The Dragons get back onto their bench. And we'll get back underway. Only the third shot of the game. Two of them in favor of Columbus. One of them for Binghamton. 14-28 to go here in the first. And it's 1-0 Dragons. I wonder what the discussion was uh, between Powell and Petrotanio. I, I don't know what, what they were saying to each other, but... I don't know. How was the weather? I don't know. Wings nice, are nice, nice, nice teddy bears. Better be in the south when it's 60 during the day. Yeah, wings were encroaching there. Now here's the drop. Now here's Dana. Petra Antonio from Bersani, 5.32, the teddy bear toss goal here in the 21-22 season. River Dragons are still in the offensive zone. Vanelli from the right point tries to chip it down deep. Yellowney got a body to it and played it out towards center. Columbus still in possession, though. Krupp gives it back to Vanelli. That one went through his stick. McBurney was going to go help him out, but Vanelli will retrieve it for himself behind his own net. Fights off a bit of a check. Geometry was off on the pass, and it's turned over at the red line to Ogunesov. Now a backhand flip, Shalafu at the Columbus blue line. Vanelli gloves it down. He takes a hit there, but gets it ahead to MJ Graham, who's got two on one across the line, and Jake Krupp just couldn't reach to get that one back and bring it onto the forehand. Tough move right there, yeah. but that could have been another big one. He had him going on. He would have been all, all alone in on net there. Here's Fitzgerald. He skates this one ahead. Three on four as the River Dragons yeah. are in the midst of a change and in good defensive posture. And Finch off the bench. Got a good stick there. Trying to move it forward. Puck goes back to the Columbus defense. In over the line. Here's Dalton Anderson. Anderson, right wing circle. Knocked off of his stick. Oganesov to the left point. Ozelinch had vacated it. And here come the Bears. Right wing side. Oganesov drops it in there. Newberg got body checked just as he got to that puck. And then Ivashkin tried to come in with some speed. Poked there. Shot coming in from Newberg and just wide of the blocker hand on McBurney. On the half wall, Stevens tries to play it down deep. Jake Grade reads it, sends it ahead. Armstrong trying to chip around Fitzgerald, uses speed, fights through a pinch, still has it left wing circle, then hooked up there on the backhand and taken out behind the play by Ogunesov. 
Binghamton will take possession of the puck out of that. Stevens, stretch pass, off the boards. Iveskin trying to go in on a breakaway. Some speed, backhand, and a pad save. Made there by McBurney. Quickly running out of space, but still drove it towards the net. The hottest goal scorer in the FPHL leading the way at an absurd 18 goals already this season. I, I almost got another one right there. Almost did. Now Bersani enters in the zone. Right point, his shot sticked away there, and we get a save from Harley White. Now this is our media timeout, the 12-16 mark here in the first, but we're going to keep it here, talk about what we saw, because we took it a little early to allow the Bears to be cleaned up here on the ice. And again, Mike, I think this is only our, what, third stoppage here yeah. of the game? Very yep. free-flowing first period, much like we saw in game number one of the series. It's a great game to watch if you're a fan. I mean, not a lot of stoppages. I mean, the referees, I mean, are basically have swallowed their whistles here in their first period. I can count a couple of iffy trips and hooks, but they ha they're not calling it, and they're doing it both ways, so it's not like it's taking off for one and taking off another. But it's the flow of the game is great, and I, you know, I, I, honestly, unless a Vetchkin's out there, it benefits the River Dragons, but when he's out there, you got to be careful because you can see that stretch pats again, and he runs right in. And he has got, for a big kind of a big guy, he's got a very good. He got some good speed on his skates. He much he could he could turn the afterburners on and get right in on net. Yeah, Nikita Ivashkin. I kind of wondered that too because a lot of comments coming out of the game were, "Wow, look how big uh, that Joe Shepard was in net," and he was at six four. But I mean, Nikita Ivashkin, you're absolutely right. I mean, for a guy that moves as well as he does, he also has the size, so he's very difficult knock off the puck and you know try and headman him into the corner or, you know push him wide that's probably why he's so dominant and uh gets as many goals as he does listed in only at 6-1 198 but uh he looks bigger uh, for some reason i think they might be undersized and usually you don't do that on those uh, no they usually charts. fudge it the other way <laughs> darling tried to chip around doyle doyle read that comes into the zone two on two a blast that one goes off the heel of a stick and wide and white Nearly rushed out of his crease to poke that ahead, but his defense takes it for him. Now Peterson from the right wing side dumps it in from the red line. McBurney slows it up, plays it back from whence it came. This one got rimmed around and did hit the glass before going out, so it will not be a penalty against McBurney. And we'll get an offensive zone draw here for the Bears. 11.52 to go here in the first. one nothing Dragons on the captain, Josh Petrantonio's sixth goal of the year. Did that go, did that go through that little, little section of the glass that's kind of opened up at the door? I don't know exactly where it went out of, but all I, all I know is I'm happy they called deflection. <laughs> Shalafu in the corner, heads off Vanelli. He'll try and go back and try his luck on the far side. Schmidt tries to chip this one out. Couldn't get that one past Yellow Knee. He ties him up. Right circle shot and a pad save made there by McBurney. Frejo has it. He gets checked there in the corner by D'Angelo. Chipped it ahead. Falls to earth right on a River Dragon stick. Dalton Anderson will backhand this one into the zone. Finch on it here with Oganesov on his back. Drops it back. Anderson, a backhand wrap and a save made there by White, who is holding on to his post. Nice on the far side there and covers it up for the whistle. 11.24 to go here in the Sun South John Deere first period. one nothing Dragons. Shots even at three apiece. Probably get that one up to four here in just a minute. you got to credit White. You know, for a lot of goaltenders, and we've seen it happen here in games that we've seen, sometimes they take that skate just a little bit by the pole, the quick wrap around. You end up getting lucky. That time White played it. Very, very sound. Bersani with the bull rush in, wins the draw, shot from the left point, deflected oh. off the side of the cage, Petro Antonio, then puts it back from behind the goal line across the crease, but nothing doing as nobody was in the slot to tap it home. Frejot held in and then knocked away a stretch pass as Binghamton had taken it from him. Petro Antonio chips into the zone, here's Doe, right circle, backhand, Harley White drives out far from the net, he was basically at the side of the cage, and Doe ends up running into him. Petra Antonio with it along the half wall. Backhand chips it down. Doe's got it on his stick. Pass to the high slot. Bersani fires. Big block in front by Fitzgerald. That one hops up on the dash. Petra Antonio pass to Bersani. High slot shot deflect. Save made. And White covers up. And Paul Frejo in the middle of all that was trying to look for a tip. And this will draw a little meeting of the clans. And the linesman will get in the way. 10.45 to go here in period one. Dragons buzzing. Looking for another one. Already up 1-0. I really like the River Dragons, the way they're passing the puck inside the zone. Once they get into the circles, they're, they're switching the puck very well. They're getting the passes and opening a guy up on the slot. If not for Fitzgerald, getting the, his pad on that on that shot there. That's, that's a possibility of a, of a very good opportunity to score a goal. Face off to the right of Harley White. Jagger Williamson taking this draw against Jens Peterson. Williamson wins it clean. Great. A shot blocked, deflecting the slot, and White reaching out on his belly with the stick clears the danger himself. 
MJ Graham checked there along the half wall by Peterson. And now here come the Bears the other way. Darling from the red line sends that one in. Pat save had to be made by McBurney from about 90 feet away. Williamson using a couple of guys as picks, and now he moves ahead with speed. Three on two. Graham's trying to help out. Right wing side. MJ Jagger through the middle. Backhand. Oh. Save made. Wait. Oh. We got loose. Oh, MJ off the post. Harley White down and out behind the goal line, and MJ oh. couldn't tap it home. He just couldn't find the angle. Hit the post. Holy mackerel. How that did not go in the net, I'll never know. Peterson tries to play this one into the high slot, and Noah Doyle clash sticks there with Holesi. And now coming out of the zone here is Krupp. Krupp puts a cross check there onto Peterson as those two get a little rough in front of the Columbus bench. Here's MJ Graham. Those two talking about it. They'll shove away from it. Now this draws a bit of a crowd. But meanwhile, MJ Graham's into the zone, left wing circle. Runs into too many sticks on the Binghamton defensive side, and the Black Bears take possession. Gino D'Angelo falls to a knee, but then drops it there for Yellow Knee, and he'll dump it in from the red line. This one stopped at the bottom of the circles. Nope, McBurney let it go. Nolan took a check because of it, and Doyle gives it back to him there on the far side corner. Armstrong skates it out to center himself. Right wing, he'll dump it in from the red line. Rims around the boards. Finch trying to hustle in on Ogane Soft. Those two cancel out as the puck goes behind the net. No Soft with it here. Gives to Yellow Knee. Up but not out. Right point held in by Vanelli. His shot finds its way through. And a save made by Harley White. Armstrong a little buzz by the tower. Draws a few Bears' attention, but nothing more out of that. Media timeout. 9.16 to go in the first. 30 seconds and we're back here on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. In 1999, Watley Convenience Stores opened its first Zelmo Zip-In. Our first store was in Leesburg, Georgia, and followed quickly by our second store in the Columbus, Phoenix City area in 2000. Since then, the brand has grown to include 11 stores in the Chattahoochee Valley and southwest Georgia. Zelmo's is an anchor in the communities it operates in. Our managers, employees, and vendors are all an integral part of the neighborhoods and communities we serve. We are proud to call these areas home and plan to continue growing with and serving the community of West Georgia and East Alabama. Zelmo's, fueling life's passions. Here we are back at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons one, Black Bears nothing. 9.16 to go here in the first. Offensive zone draw coming up for Columbus. I'm Zach DeBozart. He's Mike V. Mike, been a very entertaining hockey game. Been a very fast hockey game, too. Very good pace set by the River Dragons. They're kind of taking it to Binghamton early. And I'll tell you, the goaltender white as that puck gets stopped by him on an easy shot. Guy likes to roam around in that net, doesn't he? He's not afraid Very to come aggressive. out. Very aggressive. You know, I thought when you compared the two net miners for Columbus, Jared Rutledge and Bailey McBurney, McBurney's definitely the more aggressive one. But I tell you what, McBurney, he seems a little tame compared to some <laughs> of the stuff we've seen Harley White do in this game. He has been, you know, very adamant to come out, try and touch the puck as much as possible, play it off. And, hey, if that's his style, that's his style. But uh, definitely a little bit interesting compared to what we saw, especially from Shepard last night. The duality of the two goaltenders for the Black Bears. This one sent down. Icing is on, but it won't have the legs. It's a patch of dirty ice along the kick plate. And Vanelli's here in a bit of a wrestling match with Stevens. Binghamton comes out with it to the right point. Now D to D. No soft shot. And that one goes high over the bar. Hits the glass behind McBurney. Vanelli plays it to Petra Antonio. Chips it off the glass. Oganesov holds in right before the red line to keep Binghamton in possession. Ivashkin in over the line, left wing side, checked there by Doe. Bersani intercepted it. Newberg, though, clashed his stick, held it in for a moment. Now Doe back for Bersani, back to Doe. Two on two as he gets the line. Petra Antonio left circle, fires and scores! Same spot as the last one. Pings the top right corner. Two nothing. The captain's got two. You know, it, that's just, just absolute great passing. And of course, a great shot. Beats him the same play. Almost a common copy of the goal that we saw earlier on in the period. And that's big for Columbus to take a 2-0 lead here on their eighth shot. You know what? You see it more in basketball when a guy's got his spot on the floor. Yeah. Petra Antonio has his spot on the ice just inside that left circle from, from the slot side. He has fired two past the glove hand of Harley White. And here for the second time is Dana Barker. He shoots! Oh, yo! His second of the game, seventh of the season. This is in my 
number 17, Austin Doe. Number 15, Hunter Versace. Deflect to the middle, and Williamson nearly made it three. Great tic-tac wow. passing. Graham to Krupp to Williamson, and just maybe a couple of degrees off on that tip. Otherwise, we're talking three nothing. This one put in by Peterson. Had to be gloved out of the air by McBurney. And a little bit of pushing and shoving here as Krupp was letting Peterson know, but came in a little too hot, and Krupp is going to head off here. Yeah. This goes back to what we saw with those two talking at the bench near the course of play. And... Peterson appears to have gotten the better of Krupp on this one. He will sit, and we'll have our first Houston Clinic penalty kill of the night. 8.07 to go here in the first. Dragons still lead 2-0. And now Binghamton, a big opportunity to see their man advantage and their best goal scorers out. Last night, Binghamton only had one power play, and it lasted for eight seconds before it got taken away on a call, went to four on four. Columbus, I thought, played a very well-disciplined game, but right there, a bit of an undisciplined penalty puts Binghamton on their first power play of the night. I mean, if you're gonna, you want to do that, if you're Kirk, you, you, you're hopefully taking the guy with you. In that case right there, results in a power play. Newberg v. Anderson on the draw. Puck goes to the far side wall. Doyle tries to pinch off his man. Goes to the right point. Held in by Powell. Powell to Ivash. And Doyle all over him. Held in along the blue again. Kyle Powell down into the corner. Newberg had that one go off his skates. Then hit the stanchion weird. And Columbus slaps this one down the length of the ice. And Noah Doyle will head off for a quick change. 20 seconds already gone in this Krupp minor. Well, here's an opportunity now to see the power play. As it was last night in the third period, it certainly was a charm. Yeah, it was for Columbus. Didn't see it much for Binghamton. Now here comes Ivashkin in over the line, just on sides, four on four. Ivashkin tried to push it back. He fanned on it, but Finch couldn't get around Powell. D to D to Nosov, left point. Someone's clapping a stick. D to D back for Powell. Nosov couldn't pull the trigger, not in a shooting lane. Left wing circle, Stevens. He tries to go circle to circle. Good reach by Finch. And now Frejot knocks it out from the slot. Hits the linesman. Falls favorably for Finch. Plays a little four corners. Kills off a little more time. And now Vanelli from the near side circle all the way down to the far corner with a minute left to go in the crew minor. Got to like the kill for the River Dragons. Very aggressive. Don't play around with it. Send it down the other side. Here comes Brett Parker. He lost it on the deke. Bobbled in his feet. Binghamton cannot come into the zone. That puck is just outside the blue line. They've lost all their momentum. Nosov from his own blue line to Powell. Now back to Nosov. He comes in over the line, left wing, three on three. Nosov trying to get around Jake Ray. Spins him into the left wing corner. Nosov to the top, left point, Peterson. Trades places with Powell. His shot deflect and a save made by McBurney. That's Ivashkin in front trying to set a screen. On the far side circle, blocking and chipping that one out. Edgar's Ozilich, and it goes all the way down just inside the Binghamton zone for Powell. Sends that one cross ice. Parker sends it along the blue line. Nolan read it and touched in an offside position. And we get a whistle. 16 seconds left to go here in the crew minor. 6.22 to go in the first. And it's still 2-0. The captain, Josh Petrantonio, with both the tallies. One thing Ovechkin does, he posts himself out in front there. That shot that came in from the point, that was a shot with a purpose, hopefully getting the deflection by it or beating him cleanly or the deflection. Good play by Binghamton to try to set that up. Petra Antonio against Peterson on the draw, and Petra Antonio will just slap that one away from everybody, and down ice it goes. A dozen seconds left in the Krupp minor. Fitzgerald from behind his own net. One more rush for Binghamton here on the man advantage. An errant pass on the left wing side. Doyle slaps it out down the ice. Out of the box comes Krupp. One for one on the Houston Clinic. Penalty kill tonight are the Dragons. Houston Clinic helping the River Dragons get back to full strength. This one played up the far wall. Good chip around a man there for Halesi. Halesi tried to do it again. He ran there into Nolan. And now the Black Bears are into the zone. Peterson in the right wing corner. Sidesteps one man. Tried to play it to the middle. Noah Doyle takes that one away in the slot. Doyle across ice pass to Petra Antoni. who's already on hat trick watch. He's got speed right wing side. Filters a pass through. Back in deep. Score! There he is again. It's Austin Doe. Five straight games with the goal. 5.36 to go in the first. And it's 3-0. I'll tell you what, that's just good, good puck movement once again. Petra Antonio just sees the opportunity to get the pass right there, and Doyle just puts it right by White, and all of a sudden, you got a three-goal lead here in the first period with five left to go. Austin Doe, is there a hotter stick on this River Dragons team? Heck, the only hotter stick maybe in the league is on the other side in Ivashkin, but that's a five-game goal streak right now for Austin Doe, his 10th of the year. And here is Dana Barker. He shoots! He shoots. And back in score! Scored by number 17, Austin Doe! His 10th goal of the season, the first round of the season, double digits. Assisted by number 9, Josh Petrantonio. 
to Antonio and Nolan pick up the assist. Shot from the right point, deflected by the Black Bears. McBurney didn't see it, but it went wide. 3 nothing. Columbus leads, but Binghamton now with some zone time. Darling with it left point, his shot blocked, and Vanelli will find it on the near corner. Dealing with a check there from Shalafu. It gets moved up ahead, and MJ Graham out to center. Jay Krupp trying to take on the Binghamton defense by himself. Moves to the left wing, waits for some reinforcement, chips it down. Harley White backhands it around, back to the far wall. Under five minutes to go here in the first. Dragons put two goals in in a span of two minutes and 59 seconds. Petra Antonio his second, and Doe his first, but tenth of the year. Turnover, Shalafu, great save! Yep. Bailey McBurney! Shrugs the shoulder and is able to put that one up into the mesh and out of play. Dangerous turnover by the defense, but McBurney keeps that up and out of play. 3-0 Dragons, our last media timeout of the period. Back in 30 on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. Dressing for success is as easy as one, two, three with Wade Cleaners. Drop off your garment at any one of their five convenient branches or call their valet manager to pick them up. Go do something fun. Walk your dog, eat a hot fudge sundae, or go to a movie. Leave the dirty laundry to them. Pick up your professionally clean garments or have them delivered at no additional charge to your home or office. Yes, you too can dress for success with Wade Cleaners. Oh, and uh, don't forget the little people as you move up in the world. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. While we have a moment, let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification on the Columbus River Dragons radio network. Three nothing. River Dragons lead it here. Four thirty-four to go in the Sun South John Deere first period. Petra Antonio with two. Austin Doe with one. That line. Petra Antonio Doe and Bersani once again doing some big work here at home tonight. Right point. A shot coming in from Binghamton's no soft. That one gets blocked away down into the corner. Newberg, however, stretched his stick and he couldn't find a shot from the right wing circle. Petra Antonio skates it back at the red line, puts it onto the stick of Doe. He's in over the line. High slot to Bersani. Deeks one man. Too many sticks in the way. Doe loose in the slot. And too many Black Bears converged on Petra Antonio, who's trying to drive the net from afar. Here's Ivashkin. He tries to dipsy doodle around a man. Too many sticks for him to navigate through. And at the blue line, taken away by Grade into a scrum right along the penalty boxes. Bersani emerges and dumps it into the zone. Under four minutes to play here in the first. Dragons, big lead, 3 0. You can see uh, Petchkin over there hanging out there at the red line looking for a long pass. Didn't get it. Here's Fitzgerald from the far side circle off the boards to himself nicely. Good touch on that. Uses that move again, but now it goes deeper into the zone. Underneath the goal line, Nolan will check him in the boards and finish him. Boy, he paid the price for that. Now here's Levi Armstrong with some speed ahead. Left wing side. He's fighting through a stick, and that's Kyle Stevens. Great job on the back check to tie him up and prevent that rush from going too much farther. Just in over the line is Columbus, though. Dalton Anderson, long backhand. Easy save made there by White. He'll dish it off. Played, not out. Right point Doyle, and his shot along the ice wide of the glove hand. This one flipped up, out, and over the stick of an awaiting Black Bear. That was Holesi, and now the River Dragons will have possession here with Brad Nolan. Not a ton of hits, but the hits that they're given right now are pretty powerful. Yeah, they are really picking their moments with this. There's nothing cheap. If it's coming, it's coming. Three minutes left to go here in the first, and the Black Bears have possession as the River Dragons are changing up behind this. Here's Powell over the red line, chips that one into the zone, left wing corner. McBurney wanted to come out and play it, but Nolan will take two at first. On the far side, Krupp chips it. MJ Graham played it off a Black Bear, held in by Powell right along the blue. Left point, now working it down underneath the net. Holesi, one touch underneath the legs. Pedersen the wraparound, and a great save by McBurney, who got to that far post in time. Williamson, a backhand flip. MJ Graham with speed, gets around Powell. In all alone, MJ Graham back in. He deeks, he scores. Back to the forehand. MJ Graham makes it 4 nothing. I'll tell you, that's just great. Present the mind right there, just cut the puck. Put his head down, looked where he was going to shoot it, fired it, and beat White. Wow, 4 nothing. Never assume MJ Graham is going to stop skating. I think that's what the Binghamton defense did when they had him one on two. All he did was chip, get around Kyle Powell, and had enough speed to go forehand, backhand, forehand, and make this one for Rip Columbus with still two and a half minutes left to play here in the Sun South John Deere first period. MJ Graham, his fourth of the year. And let's hear it from Dana. He's a busy man this period. I was going to say. No goal. He moved the puck backwards. I'm oh, sorry. Wrong game. Just kidding. Again. He <laughs> shoots. <laughs> Earn the Dragons goal. Scored by number eight, MJ Graham. His fourth goal of the season. A 
assisted by number 27, Paul Frisho. A shot from the left point from Fitzgerald, a save made by Bailey McBurney, and there's a reason why Dana Barker's one of the best in the business. Yeah, he is. I tell you, that that's a reference if you're a River Dragons fan, just even from a month ago, and you saw that versus another situation, uh, you know what he was referencing, but man, that caught us off guard here in the booth. Kudos to you, Dana. MJ Graham from Paul Frejo, 17 and a half into the first period. It's 4 nothing, Columbus. A defensive zone draw coming to the right of McBurney, but getting waved out of that draw is Bersani. Well, he was going to get waved, and they score right, oh, right. right off the draw. That guy's got a shot, I'm telling you. He, he, is just, he is just amazing. That was a crazy sequence of events. I thought Bersani got waved. He stayed in. Puck was dropped quickly in the shotgun position, top of the circles. Ivashkin let it rip. And that's quieted the crowd a little bit. 30 seconds later, Binghamton's answered with a their typical goal scorer. Ivashkin has 19 now on the season. Oh, yeah. 19 in December. Unreal. 4-1. Columbus still leads, though. Just one of those things. I mean, that, that's what they needed. They, you, you know, Brim, Binghamton's trying to get you down by four. What are you going to do? You either stop the war or get a goal. He got the goal. Well, Binghamton did get what they were looking for if they're trying to chip away, but here's that effective unit. Austin Doe, high slot, he scores! Right back, Austin Doe, 5-1 Columbus! Uh, are you kidding? I'm amazed. I'm absolutely amazed. And I'm just wondering, you got a Benjamin who you talk about the talent that he has. I think Doe's just saying, what about me? That's five goals in two games. Austin Doe, second of the game, second of this period. What a rip from the high slot, 5-1. One. 1.49 to go in the first. <laughs> MJ Graham at 17.30. 30 seconds later, I've Ashkin. 11 seconds later, Austin Doe. Well, we're going to have plenty to talk about in the first intermission report, but here's Dana. <laughs> Oh, here's a chance for Anderson. Oh, he reads it off the bar and down. Petra Antonio and Grade, the assists on Doe's goal. Dalton Anderson rang the bar down maybe a centimeter more. That's bar down and in for a 6 1 advantage. My goodness. The offense has come to play. They've got their shooting sticks out there on both sides, especially Columbus. Here's a chance, side of the net, loose in the crease. McBurney end up diving on that one. Finch is going to bear hug Holesi to save his netminder, and we will get nothing out of this. 107 to go in the first. That's just a heads-up play by McBurney. Just the puck is right there in the slot. Decides to just cover it up. Take your chances with the draw. Uh, they got the wrong score on the board, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, Binghamton got credited up with the goal. Should be 5-1. It reads 5-2 right yeah. now here in the here in the building. Yeah. There it goes. Yeah. It got flipped back. That's oh, it. I see. It's a shot on goal. A shot on goal. It, it went from 8 to 9. <laughs> Pressed the wrong button on there. It's the new kid in the box. <laughs> What's this button for? Got a little worried about that. All right, here we go. Face off coming to the left of McBurney. And he'll be able to take his time, get set. Now here we go. Bersani and Newberg in on this draw. Newberg will win it clean. Powell fires a shot, top of the circles, blocked by Doe. Bersani with it in the corner. Sends this one to Doyle behind the net. Under a minute to go here in the Sun South John Deere first period. Turnover. Ivashkin to Newberg. Short angle shot. And that one blocked away by a Columbus defenseman. Bersani up ahead here for Nolan. Nolan, three on three as he hits the line. A pass to the high slot. Ivashkin rubs shoulders here with Doe. Nolan, or excuse me, that was Bersani. N Do Nolan now works it down to Doe. And from the corner, sort of chipped that one towards the middle. Net comes off as Newberg runs into the net. And that's a big hit. Oganesov and Bersani meeting up. That's drawn a large crowd behind the displaced net. And now, what will we get out of this? We had a lot of whistle blowing, not a lot of pointing. Not a lot of penalties. They're not going to call anything. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Linesmen are not escorting anybody to the boxes. Newberg was smart to take the... the he, he was fall, You know how you, you fall and you accidentally kind of grab the crossbar and take maybe, it off the Maybe he didn't get up as quick as he could have yeah, on know. that slide. Is that what you're saying? It's a good play, though. It's smart for him. 36.3 left to go in the first. Dragons 5, Black Bears 1. Petra Antonio wins that one clean. 
Austin Doe, he has a stick tied up. Right point, waving at that. Held in by Doyle. Gloved between the two. Doyle and Oganesov. Now they're going to whack at each other as they collide. Now there's two on one for the Bears. Ivashkin right wing side with Stevens with them. Backdoor play on the backhand. And Stevens, that pass too hot to handle and he couldn't get it towards net. Ivashkin checked there by Nolan behind the net. 16 seconds to go here. On the near side, playing it back to the middle. Doyle knocked that one away. Good body positioning. Here's Petra Antonio. Speed ahead and three on one of the Dragons. Hustle. Eight seconds to go in the period. Petra Antonio right circle pass across. And that one red by Powell, taken away, three seconds left, still with the puck, Vanelli a blocker save, made there by White, and that'll do it for 20 minutes of play, a three on one rush to end the period there, nearly made it 6-1, but we have no shortage of talking points for sure, as this crowd recognizes a heck of an effort from the Dragons in that first period of play, 5-1 as we get ready for the John Emerald Distilling First Intermission Report, Mike, your immediate thoughts before we send it to break. Well, here's my thoughts. In 30 minutes of hockey, this this building against this Binghamton team, the, <laughs> the Dragons have put up 10 goals. It's an amazing feat. And they almost put in another one almost, right at the end of the period. Almost put in a couple. The Anderson bar down and out, and then that three-on-one. Man, oh, man, Harley White has been under siege. 10 saves on 15 shots. Not a period he'll want to remember, that's for sure. Dragons lead at 5-1. We're through 20 minutes. Let's head to the... Uh, John Emerald Distilling, first intermission report after this on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Network. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola a journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Is that the sound of an ooey, gooey, cheesy, crunchy slice of P-I-Z-Z-A? <laughs> Obviously, but as good as that sounds, we think it can get even better. Oh yeah, that's the sound of a freshly opened fizz-filled Pepsi. The only thing that can take this flavor medley of crunchy dough, mouth-watering cheese and savory sauce to the next level. How about another bite? Pepsi and pizza sound like a match made in heaven and taste even better. Pizza, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. In 1999, Watley Convenience Stores opened its first Zelmo Zip-In. Our first store was in Leesburg, Georgia, and followed quickly by our second store in the Columbus, Phoenix City area in 2000. Since then, the brand has grown to include 11 stores in the Chattahoochee Valley and southwest Georgia. Zelmo's is an anchor in the communities it operates in. Our managers, employees, and vendors are all an integral part of the neighborhoods and communities we serve. We are proud to call these areas home and plan to continue growing with and serving the community of West Georgia and East Alabama. Zelmo's, fueling life's passions. Progress. It's the belief that your life should be easier, that life should be fun, and that the best is yet to come. With us, you have a provider who pours everything into bringing progress home. And it's not just some big name in a faraway glass tower. That provider is here. That provider is Bean. With local service and faster internet, the only place you're going is forward. And we're taking you there. Progress. Your beam. Your way. It's River Dragon season, and it's time to get out to a game. Visit Ticketmaster or the Civic Center box office to purchase tickets to the next game or any game left this season. Visit rdragons.com to check the schedule and stay up to date with everything River Dragons hockey. The defending Ignite Cup champions are looking to keep their winning ways, and you can be part of the best atmosphere in the FBHL to help make it happen. Purchase tickets online on Ticketmaster or skip the fees and visit the Columbus Civic Center box office during normal business hours. Get up and get loud, Columbus. The River Dragons are ready to roar. We are through 20 minutes of play here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons 5, Black Bears 1. I'm Zach DeBozart. He's Mike V. Uh, Mike, you might have missed the end of the game, you know, last night and saw the run of goals, but apparently about 20 to 24 hours did not cool down the River Dragons at all. In total, if you go back to the third period, the River Dragons threw two games running, 9-0 run yeah, right. on Binghamton. Just unreal, and it started up at the 532 mark of the period. Josh Petrantonio sending the Teddy Bears to the ice with a goal from just inside the left wing circle. Whole bunch of Bears started raining down. Whole lot of fun, and you thought, all right, they got that one out of the way. The monkey's off the back. 
and yet the delay in things we actually thought might have favored Binghamton because they can lock in. It's as good as a timeout. River Dragons are out helping to clean up the ice. They got their mental resolve, try and you know get themselves refocused, and that didn't happen. No, it, 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 and as you said, a teddy bear toss after a goal, it's always going to be in favor of the visiting team because that's what you do and that's the price you pay for doing a great thing for the community. But as you said, what I love about the River Dragons, I think right from the first, right from the puck drop, they have just been, and, and call it whatever, I mean, you've you got that good feeling that, hey, look, if we matched up against these guys last night, our backs were against the wall, we fought out. This, today, we're just going to keep it going, keep the pressure going. They put up 15 shots on White, and they beat them five times. And you got Doe and Petra Antonio putting on a clinic out there, and Graham as well. Yeah, Petra Antonio would tally again from... Just about the same spot on the ice, though that time he went top right corner, where I think he went might have went low glove side on the opening goal. Uh, 5.32 and 11.25 for each of Petra Antonio's. Bersani got two assists. Doe also factored in on an assist on the second one. And then Austin Doe, four-game goal streak. Hey, let's make it a five-game goal streak. 14.24 <laughs> mark. He finds the back of the net with the help of Josh Petra Antonio. 3 nothing at that point, you thought, all right, Dragons are rolling. This is going good. Crowd's getting loud. And the River Dragons, I guess, are just never satisfied. That's when we get this absurd run of goals. 17.30 mark, MJ Graham gets a little breakaway from himself and a good feed from Paul Frazier. A little forehand, backhand, forehand to score it, make it 4 nothing. Then off a defensive zone draw, Nikita Ivashkin sitting in that shotgun position, top of the circle, just rips it off the faceoff 30 seconds later, and each eight on the team has scored. Now it's 4-1. Off the ensuing center ice drop, Petra Antonio, or excuse me, Bersani wins it back to Grade, to Petra Antonio, to Doe, who, and I, I told you this during the break, for some reason, it just looked like the way Doe was coming in, he was going to score. It didn't matter, it was basically two on three. He looked at the defense, found his spot, and just nailed that corner. His second of the game, 11th of the season. That's how we sit 5-1 through 20 minutes of play. Woo. And, a, and a big thing, too, that, that's in between there. You're up 4 nothing. Everything's happening. As you said, Avetskin scores a goal. So what does the River Dragons do? Instead of putting their ears down and they tuck their tails, they come out and score a goal, what, 11, just a few seconds 11 later? 11 seconds. We get uh, two goals, 30 seconds apart, and then 11 seconds. So three goals between the two teams in a span of 41 seconds. That's a wave of emotions after the crowd was already riding a high, uh, being up 4 nothing. River Dragons 5, Black Bears 1. Wow, what a 20 minutes of play that was. Who knows if we're going to have the rest of this game. You having, you having fun yet on a Saturday night? Oh, it's a good time here in Columbus. Let's take a break. When we come back, a look around the FPHL after this on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Network. The Chattahoots' favorite place for spirits in the Valley is John Emerald Distilling Company in Opelika. Conveniently located in beautiful downtown Opelika, they're open Monday through Saturday for tours, tasting, and bottle sales. Not in Opelika? No problem. Problem. From Birmingham to Columbus, there's plenty of places where John Emerald Originals are sold. Check out some of their favorite recipes at johnemerylddistilling.com and give them a follow on social media at JED Spirits on Twitter and Instagram. Dressing for success is as easy as one, two, three with Wade Cleaners. Drop off your garment at any one of their five convenient branches or call their valet manager to pick them up. Go do something fun. Walk your dog, eat a hot fudge sundae, or go to a movie. Leave the dirty laundry to them. Pick up your professionally clean garments or have them delivered at no additional charge to your home or office. Yes, you too can dress for success with Wade Cleaners. Oh, and uh, don't forget the little people as you move up in the world. Who wants a copy when you can own the real thing? At Heckler & Coke, the foundation for everything we do is an unswerving commitment to excellence. Shooters of Columbus at 4445 Milton Road is your local area premium stocking dealer for all your favorite Heckler & Coke products. They also have an indoor range with rentals available, from rifles and pistols to ammo and holsters. There's no better choice in the firearm business than Heckler & Coke. Looking to update that hockey game day wardrobe? The best place to do that is to visit the online home for all River Dragons licensed apparel, rdragonsmerch.com. With new designs coming out all the time and special promotional and sale offers always live, there's always a reason to check back to the site and score some new gear. Plus, lots of fun souvenirs and other knickknacks that make great gifts for all sorts of occasions. So get there to rdragonsmerch.com, the official store for all team licensed apparel. That's rdragonsmerch.com.
still trying to catch our breath here on the John Emerald Distilling First Intermission Report after the Dragons take a 5-1 lead through the first 20 minutes of play. I'm Zach DeBozart. He's Mike V. Uh, Mike, I mean, between the last two periods of hockey that we have seen here, I mean, is there a cold stick on the Dragons bench? I don't think so. Everybody seems like they're producing lead up top by the Petra, Petra Antonio, Doe, and Bersani line. Right. The thing that the, the River Dragons have to do as much as you have, you got to keep this going. you got to keep the momentum going. You can't take a break. can't say, all right, we got this one in the bag because we know that the Black Bears are capable of putting the puck in the net just as well as the River Dragons are. Being outplayed, of course, in Black Bears and trailing by four goals. But you know they're going to have a conversation in the room, and they're going to come out, and they're going to do what they have to do to try to chip away. There's still two periods left, so... Even though it's a it's a great period and it's been a great two periods that you've played, or a period and a half, so to speak. Yep. Then you got you just got to keep that going and, and just keep your nose to the grindstone. They're a dangerous team for sure. Don't think four goals uh, is too much for a team like Binghamton to come back from. Let's take a look around the FPHL. Brought to you by Zelmo Zippin. Zelmo's fueling life's passions. Good news, they could throw the teddy bears in Winston-Salem as well. In fact, shortly after the Austin Federley goal, Ramil Talipov scores a goal at the 8-19 mark, makes it 1-1, sends the teddy bears to the ice. But remember how we said usually a teddy bear toss kind of favors the road team because, you know, they're not helping out with the bears. They can kind of readjust themselves, not get too rattled off the goal. That happened, and it happened to the tune of eight seconds later, Dalton J giving Port Huron back the lead, 2-1 with an assist from Quentin Roseboom and Dustin Henning. Tommy Car- or excuse me, Gus Ford continued his hot streak this weekend as he tied it up 2-2 later in the period, and then Tommy Cardinal, who got an assist on that goal, scored one of his own near the end of the second, gave Carolina a 3-2 lead heading into the third. 44 seconds into the third, a power play goal from Dalton J made it 3-3, but that's since been answered back by Gus Ford. 4-3, Carolina leads with 15 minutes left to go in the third. Back and forth they go in the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. Man, heck of a game brewing there in Carolina. Well, you know, Carolina right now, they're, they're in the, the position of trying to battle their way back into the standings and try yep. to get up there. So good opportunity for them with their teddy bear toss tonight. They didn't get cursed on that deal. No, they so did not. They're looking to get a couple of points out of that. And you know what? As we remarked, this game features the two teams tied for third. That game features the two teams tied for fifth. So very important games. You're talking about jockeying for position, especially when you look at the standings. And Danbury and Watertown are starting to separate themselves a little bit from the pack. Not a whole lot yet, but if this trend continues, you can be talking about a two-horse race for that number one seat. Still a lot of hockey to play, but I'm just saying, you're no longer in that early season phase where everybody's kind of mishmashed together. Some pods are starting to form in those standings. Watertown Wolves are hosting the Delaware Thunder. Watertown have scored twice in the first period. Cole McKechnie and Rocco Di Costanzo, about two minutes and four seconds apart. They're through 20 minutes of play. Watertown leading in shots, 15 to 10, and leading on the goals to nothing. As you look around the FPHL, brought to you by Zelmo Zippin. Zelmo is the official fuel provider of the Columbus River Dragons. Mike, would you like to take us through the Southern Hockey scoreboard? We've got a full slate of action here with five games going on in the SB. Yeah, you get uh, Roanoke and Macon tied at one. They're just starting the third period. Huntsville and Evanston, they're at... Uh, Evansville. Evansville, pardon me. <laughs> at they uh, two nothing Huntsville, with uh, 5.24 left to play in the first period. Uh, Birmingham... Trailing Vermilion County. That, that's the Ver, new one. Vermilion County. There i, I got to remember, he, he, when you were in the SPHL, the team was wasn't no, there. Yeah, that, that county was there, but there was no <laughs> hockey team there. Yeah, right. Vermilion but, County. <laughs> in the first period, that one there won nothing over Birmingham. Pensacola is uh, just getting started in the first period. They're scoreless. Quad City. The quad, quad Cities. And then Knoxville, Illinois. Knoxville and Peoria scoreless as well. SB's changed a little bit, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but hey, you know what? I mean, it take, you know, you're, you're gone just a few years and look what happens. I mean, it, it, it spreads. But that's minor league hockey. It and is. And I think that's a great thing. I mean, teams get in the leagues. And they cross leagues or whatever. And who knows? You know, you may. I know this is something that, that's not something that's going to happen. But you could picture almost a consolidation of the central of the, uh, pardon me, of the uh, Federal Hockey League along with the SPHL that would make for quite a bit of northern you know and southern conferences so to speak yeah the footprints are certainly intertwined in a, in a way and that's why we take a look at the southern hockey scoreboard in the SPHL all right let's take a break when we come back we get ready for the call of the wild animal safari second period and I got to do one thing all right I got to say hi to the the old buck in New England my dad listening in with my brother Steve and Diana 
I hope you're having a, a – they put the tree up today. Oh, Got the very pitches nice. there. Thanks, uh, and I love you guys, and I miss you, and I hope I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks so much for that, Mike. Let's take a break. When we come back, we get ready for the Wild Animal Safari second period next on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Talking about Harvey Lumber over the past few years, I've always felt that it was very important to brag on the fact that Harvey Lumber has been here for over 150 years, taking care of many generations throughout the Chattahoochee Valley. They've stayed in business by always featuring the very best building materials that every company has to offer. And what's the most important element in building materials? The wood you use. That's why you'll always find the Yellowwood brand available at Harvey Lumber. Now there's something new, Yellowwood Protector. You've probably seen it advertised a lot during your favorite SEC football games on Saturdays. Yellow Wood Protector is a semi-transparent stain and water repellent wood sealer for decks, fences, pergolas, outdoor furniture, and pretty much anything you can build with yellow wood. Yellow Wood Protector comes in four different colors, smoky gray, rich walnut, American classic cedar, and crystal clear. You know we always say that if it doesn't have that yellow tag, you don't want it. Now try the first stain worthy of the yellow tag, Yellow Wood Protector. Available at Harvey Lumber Company, 815th Street, open Monday through Friday, 7 to 5. Gulf Eagle Supply specializes in servicing the professional roofing contractor and also provides a variety of products and services to the homeowner, building owner, architect, and general contractor. Our goal to the contractor is not only to provide competitive material pricing, but also to help them build their business and assist in their success. We do this with knowledgeable sales personnel and through our core values. As we say, Gulf Eagle, we got a solution for that. Call us today at 706-550-1555. Gulf Eagle Supply. Back here one more time in the John Emerald Distilling First Intermission Report. Dragons 5, Black Bears 1. Just about a minute or so left in the segment. Only a minute or so left for Mike V before he's got to say goodbye to us once again. Mike, I'm glad you got to see the exciting part of the game, at least so far in this one. But uh, what do you got words for us as we get ready for the second? Well, I mean, again, keep your, keep your nose to the grindstone. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't change a damn thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> and on White, honestly, I mean, we talked about it in the intermission. If you know, I'm sure Jerome Bouchard is keyed in on this. Shoot up high on the glove side. I mean, that seems to be where they have a lot of success. Now, in all fairness to White, his defense has not been very good allowing some odd man breaks and some breakaways, so to speak, Graham, especially being able to chip it between three guys and getting in scoring a goal. So he needs some support from them. But for the Dragons, keep shooting, keep shooting, and keep shooting. Thanks so much for your time, Mike. Always a pleasure to have you, you in brother. on the broadcast. I'm sure we'll see you another time. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, Wild Animal Safari Second Period is next on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. The Chattahoots' favorite place for spirits in the valley is John Emerald Distilling Company in Opelika. Conveniently located in beautiful downtown Opelika, they're open Monday through Saturday for tours, tasting, and bottle sales. Not in Opelika? No problem. From Birmingham to Columbus, there's plenty of places where John Emerald originals are sold. Check out some of their favorite recipes at johnemerylddistilling.com and give them a follow on social media at JED Spirits on Twitter and Instagram. At the Country Inn and Suites by Radisson, you'll enjoy comfortable accommodations close to Columbus State University, Fort Benning, and of course, the River Dragons games. Conveniently located at 1720 Fountain Court in Columbus, you'll be minutes away from all your favorite Columbus destinations. Free high-speed Wi-Fi and hot breakfast always available too. So whether you're staying for business or for pleasure, make your next stay in Columbus a comfortable one at the official hotel partner of the River Dragons. Country Inn and Suites by Radisson. Oral and Max Maxillofacial surgeons Mark Zwicky, Lee Allen practice a traditional scope of oral and maxillofacial surgery with over 60 years of combined expertise, ranging from oral pathology to wisdom tooth removal. They perform a full range of dental implant and bone grafting procedures, as well as non-invasive surgical facial cosmetic procedures. That level of expertise is why the River Dragons trust them. Call them in Columbus at 596-1757 or in LaGrange at 884-2655. We 
we are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. Both teams on the ice. The Wild Animal Safari second period is just moments away from starting. Bailey McBurney is in the crease over to our right. Eight saves on nine shots for him. Dragons in the blackout look with the blacked out C logo on the chest. Gray numbers, teal trim all throughout, and black helmets and pants. They go right to left across your radio dial. Over to our left, it is a change in net. Joe Shepard will now take over for Harley White. White's day is done after 10 saves on 15 shots. Shepard over to our left. Black Bears go left to right in the white road jerseys. Green sash Binghamton across the chest. Black helmets, secondaries, and green numbers. They go left to right. Five on five to start. D'Angelo against Williams. Referee with the puck in hand. And I'll say it for Scott Brand. Someone's getting slobbered on. It's the Wild Animal Safari second period. And it starts right now. D'Angelo wins that draw. And he'll get it back to his defense. No soft plate. That one off of a body. It'll go all the way down into the Columbus end. Frejot racing after it here. He gets checked by D'Angelo. Big time hit into the boards there for him. Rimmed all the way around. Get past the left point. And now here's Nosov. That one chipped out of the zone. Williamson plays it back in. He takes a hit there from D'Angelo. Just announced there the new goaltender, Joe Shepard. So that does confirm he is in the crease. Three on two for Binghamton as they hit the line. Left circle, yellow knee shot. That's blocked there by Vanelli. Behind the net. Wraparound attempt there for D'Angelo. Ends up hitting the side of the cage. Got the angle all wrong. Frejot rims this one around at the half wall. Shalafu, big check as he's run into there by Vanelli. And Williamson will pick it up out of the corner boards. Vanelli, look out, turnover there. Williamson and a stick lifted. Save made McBurney as D'Angelo did a good job off the pass. Just read Jagger Williamson's stick right and got it towards the middle. Bailey McBurney makes a good save, covers up the puck, and we get a whistle. 19 10 left to go here in the first. And it is still. 5-1 Columbus. No scoring yet in this period, but with how hot these teams ended, again, near the end of the first period, three goals between the two teams in 41 seconds. Maybe they have cooled off a little bit in the locker room now. Newberg ties up with Bersani on this draw. Wings come in and help, and it is Ozelinch skating it out here for Columbus. Austin Doe plays that one back into his own zone. The backhand for Gray. Petra Antonio chips that one ahead. Red by Fitzgerald. He plays it over. Right wing side with some space. Brett Parker. Parker, right wing circle. We caught an edge. And he'll go down awkwardly towards the half wall. Bersani takes the puck and just chips it down ice. Darling with it in his own end. Hit Doe with the attempted outlet. Puck goes to the far wall. Petra Antonio puts a hit onto him. Gloved down by Oza Lynch. Hand passes on. Binghamton will touch it, though. And Darling skates with some speed. Gets around Doe. And he's going right wing side. Chips that one into the zone. Rims all the way around. Brad Nolan on the far side corner. Goes off the wall. Petra Antonio can't get it out. Held in by Fitzgerald. Shot deflected. Stick save. Made there by McBurney. Saw it from distance. Petra Antonio flips it out. Binghamton careful on the potential too many men on the ice. Fitzgerald will have it back in his own end. Powell on the near side boards. Sent up ahead. Shot coming in from Peterson. Blocked. Another effort. Peterson across the crease. He sends that one wide. Powell from the right circle. Save made McBurney. Rebound goes around to the far side. Fitzgerald down into the corner. Anderson with the reach. Nolan will rim this one all the way around the boards. Stevens fires from the right point. Blocker save made by McBurney. High slot. The rebound comes out. Columbus will have it. Schmidt puts it right out of the tape of Anderson. Through the middle. Four on two. River Dragons with numbers, but a good play by Fitzgerald. Sends him wide to the net. Schmidt a chance. Puts that one in the crease. Easily padded away by Shepard for his first touch of the game. Now Anderson from the red line. Slaps this one in. Much harder. A glove save made by Shepard. And he will cover it up with a couple of River Dragons coming in with some speed. 17.33 left to go here in the second. 5-1 Dragons. River Dragons hockey brought to you all season long by Sherry and her crew of master barbers at Old School Barbershop. 10.41 First Avenue in downtown Columbus. Call ahead for an appointment when they open 10 a.m. Monday. 706-321-5930 or book your appointment online. OldSchoolBarbershop.com spelled Old School Barber S-H-O-P-P-E dot com. The official barbershop of your Columbus River Dragons. Williamson tried to play that to Graham down deep in the corner. Binghamton read it, plays it out to center. Vanelli slaps it right back in. No soft with it on the near side circle. Chips off the glass. Shalafu racing after it. Couldn't get to it in time. Frejot just pushes it out. Dumped back in by D'Angelo. Quick touch up there from the Bears. Frejot will race after this one. Gets in front of Yellow Knee. He'll chip that one out. Big hit there by Shalafu. And it gets tied up along the wall. But it does eventually get out as Yellow Knee has at the logo. Soft dump, right wing side. Frejot backhand tried to get it out. Yellow knee, good job holding at the right point. 
Now from behind the net, this one played off the far wall. Good job coming in off the bench there as Fitzgerald keeps the stick low, pushes it down into the corner farther for himself, and Frazier lines up a big hit on him. D'Angelo backhand from behind the net, save made McBurney. Rebound, couldn't get the glove to it first, but here's some numbers here for Columbus. MJ Graham with speed, he's got Jagger Williamson on his left. Right circle, pass across, and Jagger Williamson couldn't get the stick on that. It was a hard, fast pass. Jagger Williamson just couldn't get enough on it. Discarded stick there. It belongs to well, looks like one of the Black Bears who is now headed off. So it's just a discarded stick, but everyone's still five on five while Columbus plays catch with this in their own end. Doe filters it ahead to Petre Antonio. Three on two as Ozelinch joins in on the play. Petre Antonio, left wing circle, filters Bersani. Save made by Shepard. He was holding onto the post and making himself look big and tight. Bersani up to the top. Left point, Ozelinch looks, fires. Blocked in front there by Fitzgerald. Petre Antonio tries to lift the stick, but Binghamton is able to get it out. Red line, Ozelinch, look out. He played it right to Ivashkin. Here's Ivashkin with this at the left wing circle. Oslinch hounding after him, and a good stick by the Latvian right there pushes it into the corner. Petro Antonio takes it away. Here comes Columbus with some numbers ahead, but from the red line, Petro will just dump it in and head off for a change. Shepard gloves it and plays it behind the net for Darling. 15-30. We'll have to go here in the second. 5-1 Dragons. Turnover in front of the bench. Coming into the zone. Here's Krupp. He deeks. High slot. Waits. A pass to the right circle. Williamson has to take it off the wall. Back for Krupp. High slot. Looks. Doesn't have the shooting lane. Right circle. Doyle a blast. That one high over the bar. Hits the glass behind Shepard. Now into the left wing corner. It's Graham. Williamson picks it out of feet as he was checked. Jagger Williamson drives the net. Good stick. Can't get nothing there. But he just lost the puck at the last moment with Newberg all over his back. Williamson still with it. Pass across Graham. Now one might have gotten a touch there is Newberg. Williamson was dumped down in the slot at the end of that. Binghamton collects it. Skates it out to center. Ogan Asoff. Now he's being bothered by Williamson who's trying to lift his stick. And he's at the end of his shift. Heads off for a change. And Columbus, this being the period of the long change, changing up all five bodies, trying to hem the Black Bears in. Binghamton's got one or two bodies off on this as they send it off towards the red line. Schmidt gives it a wave over to the right wing side. Armstrong sends that one in on a cross ice dump. On the left wing hash mark, Schmidt to the middle. Stick save made there by Shepard. And we get a whistle and immediate timeout. 14.32 left to go here in the second. 5-1 Dragons here on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. It's a copy when you can own the real thing. At Heckler & Koch, the foundation for everything we do is an unswerving commitment to excellence. Shooters of Columbus at 4445 Milton Road is your local area premium stocking dealer for all your favorite Heckler & Koch products. They also have an indoor range with rentals available. From rifles and pistols to ammo and holsters, there's no better choice in the firearm business than Heckler & Koch. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. 14-32 left to go here in the second. Dragons five, Black Bears one. All of our scoring has come back in the first period. As the crowd is screaming for ice cream. Brought to you by Brewster's Ice Cream. Also a proud sponsor of birthdays here at the Columbus Civic Center. And if you have a group celebrating a birthday, you want to come on out to a hockey game, <clears throat> give the office a call, 706-507-4625. Set you up with all kinds of fun burks, like a birthday shout-out brought to you by Brewsters here in the arena. Binghamton dumps this one down into the Columbus end. Vanelli, calm under pressure, plays it up ahead, and here come the River Dragons out of their own zone. Right wing side, this one sent in here off the stick of Armstrong. Schmidt with a little chop there with Powell. And this one's going to get flipped up and out of play, and Nosoff just delayed the game with that one. Clear as day. I don't even think he came close to the glass there as that one was in about row F up top here at the Civic Center. 14.07 to go here in the second. Delay of game the call, and this will be the first Georgia Power power play of the night for Columbus. Last night it was lethal. Three for five. However, that number slightly skewed against them. Really was three for four. They had an eight-second power play uh, last night as part of some four-on-fours that were called in close succession. So, for all intents and purposes, a very hot power play right now coming onto the ice in an already lopsided game. 5-1 Columbus, 14.07 to go in the second. Jagger Williamson leads the unit out there as the centerman, taking this draw against Newberg. Newberg will win that one into the corner. Darling to Ivashkin, chips ahead, and Ivashkin's one-on-one -on -one with Doyle back. 
Ivashkin moves this one to the center, tries to get around Doyle, outside in, back in across, nobody there, and now Columbus can have numbers if they hustle. Four on two through the neutral zone. Krupa ahead for Graham, right wing side. Graham, right wing hash, stops it up, has some space, circle to circle pass, goes through Doyle, look out, Ivashkin's got an open wing, right wing side. Ivashkin with grade watching over him, drives the net, save made McBurney, tried to go five hole on him, and he closed it up just in time, and he will cover it up for the whistle. 13.39 left to go here in the second. 132 of the Georgia Power power play. But it's the Black Bears who have been a little more lethal, it looks like, in terms of the entry. We just went pretty end-to-end -end there, despite the River Dragons being a man up. Bersani directing some traffic here for the Dragons. He takes this draw against Kyle Stevens. And Stevens is going to get waved, so D'Angelo will now come in to take his place. Tied up, Frejo takes it away, goes behind his own net, looks to set up a rush. Frejo barking some instructions to Petra Antonio, right wing side, now back from as he hits his own blue. Up ahead to Petra Antonio at the Binghamton blue. Chips around a man using the boards, has it along the goal line, watched by D'Angelo. Up the wall, Frejo has it right point, skates it a bit. To the top of the circles, Austin Doe, Frejo wanted the one-timer, couldn't pull the trigger, now fires. And I think Bersani inadvertently blocked that one, or maybe Shepard got a piece of that with the shoulder. He couldn't really see it. It hit up off of somebody, went way up high into the netting, and goes out of play for a whistle. 13-11 left to go here in the second. Dragons 5, Black Bears 1. I think that one might have hit Shepard, but that isn't the issue he's currently working with. Fixing a strap near his right skate. He'll be given the time he needs to get that one settled out. And we can tell you here, if you're listening here in the building, or maybe you're listening at home looking for a beverage, check out the official light beer partner of your Columbus River Dragons, Flight by Yingling. Raise the bar for the next generation of light beer. Flight by Yingling is easy drinking, clean, crisp, and refreshing. Only 95 calories, 2.6 grams of carbs, and 4.2 alcohol by volume. Flight by Yingling, the official light beer of the Columbus River Dragons. Bersani gets waved, Petra Antonio comes in, takes his draw against Newbert, tied up in the feet at the bottom of the circles, Binghamton has it, it's played off of Ivashkin, but it goes down the ice and is picked up by Columbus at their own blue line. Frejo plays that one ahead, Austin Doe, excuse me, Bersani gets around a man, he gets hooked up and a penalty comes up out of this, holding is the call, very unhappy with this is Gino D'Angelo, excuse me, that's Oganesov. 91, not 95. Eric Oganesov will head off two minutes for holding. This Georgia Power power play just got a little more interesting. Five on three now in favor of the Dragons for 50 seconds. Draw, one by Columbus, center point. Benelli has it to Frejo, makes the shot. Benelli, one-time blast, and he just missed the top left corner. Frejo has it here at the right point. 40 seconds left to five on three. Drives the high slot, fires, save made. Rebound loose in the slot and sent down the length of the ice there by Newberg. Oh, and hit the corner boards weird. Three different Dragons are back in their own zone though to start up this rush. Binghamton changes two bodies behind the play. Here's Petra Antonio over the line, four on three. Right wing circle, now takes it behind the net. Still on the forehand, gives it up. Left wing half wall. Vanelli to the right wing circle for Doe. Frejo with it, center point. Looks, nothing doing there. Left circle, back for Vanelli. He handles the puck. Eight seconds left to go in the five on three. Petra Antonio, back for Vanelli, left point. Petra Antonio faked the one-timer at the dot. Fires, blocker save on a screen there. Bersani scores off the glass. Somehow found its way behind with Bersani getting the last touch. 6-1. Power play goal, but on the five on four, we'll be back to full strength. Well, Bersani, Doe, Petra, Antonio, the line we've been telling you all about tonight. They strike again, this time on the man advantage, 7.55 into the Wild Animal Safari second period. River Dragons will technically be one for two on the Georgia Power power play after that. And here's Dana Barker. We shoot! Hunter Dragons power play goal scored by number 15, Hunter Bersani. 
Six is my number 27, Paul Frazo. That's 755 in the second period. Bersani from Frazo. Power play goal for the Dragons. It is now 6-1. This one rims itself around. Williamson tied up here with Stevens. Grade will help this one out. Goes around to the near side boards, and it's Jay Krupp on it now. Krupp plays it up ahead. Here's MJ Graham. Oslin just hustling in to get at this play. He drives towards the net, but Graham takes it behind. Graham off the back of the net to himself. Played to the slot. Jagger Williamson laid on it, but lifted a stick and has the puck right back. At the left point, tying up with a man here is Brad Nolan. Loose in the feet, MJ Graham picks it out. Graham, right circle to Krupp, back door, high slot. Oh, Williamson scores! That is a dangerous position and a dangerous man to let have the puck there. Dagger Williamson, 7-1. Given the weather outside, when it rains, it pours. And the Columbus River Dragons are just pouring it on here. Two goals, 58 seconds apart. Jagger Williamson picking up his third of the year to get this game to the Brazil. And here is Dana Barker again. Krupp and Graham on the assist for Williamson's third of the year, 7-1. Dragons lead it here. We're just about halfway through this contest. Bit of an ugly scrum in the corner. Ivashkin's going to come out with it. Doyle will drop him, but we're going to get a whistle and a penalty. And not sure which part of the ugly scrum is going to get called, but a cross-checking signal has been given. And Ivashkin might be in a little bit of trouble behind the net. McBurney signals for some assistance to come on as Ivashkin is struggling to get up. There was an ugly scrum in the far corner. A couple of bodies had fallen. Ivashkin emerged from it, and then he got checked by Doyle. And Doyle is the one going, so it must be the cross check that brought Ivashkin down. And we certainly hope it's nothing too serious, but right now he is skating off with the assistance of a few of his teammates, and he'll be looked at likely on the bench. They're not dragging him to the corner where the Binghamton Tunnel is. News goes from bad to worse if you are Binghamton with your leading goal scorer here a little hobbled, but he's going to tough it out, stay on the bench, probably get some treatment, and who knows, with four minutes put up on the board against Noah Doyle. Depending on if he can shake that off, you might see him if this power play goes the distance. Four minutes on the board, but a cross-checking signal was given, so it looks like it's two different two-minute minors, if we had to guess. Trying to get an eye from our off-ice officials here. Oh, now they change it to two, okay. So the four minutes went off the board. Now it's back down to a two-minute minor. So the cross-checking is the only penalty. Just one Binghamton power play out of this. 0 for 1, which means the River Dragons are 1 for 1 on the Houston Clinic penalty kill tonight. Petra Antonio directing some traffic, ready to take this draw against Newberg. And a stick exploded off the faceoff. It was Newberg, so Petra Antonio win that draw into the corner. Austin Doe with some speed ahead for Petra Antonio. Newberg's got a new twig. Petra Antonio, nice little toe drag around one. Takes both defensemen with him. Doe on a backhand, couldn't get it across Shepard. Side angle shot off the backside of the net. And now, Back Bears will finally take possession of this. That was a crazy sequence of events if you were Binghamton and nearly resulted in a shorthanded goal. Howell with this, gets it over to Newberg. Excuse me, Stevens, and he skates this one with some steam ahead. Three on four as he hits the line left wing. 35 seconds already gone in that Doyle cross-checking minor. Now here's Newberg, left wing hash with it. Down into the corner, plays it down behind the net. Puck, puck hops up over the stick there of Stevens. Powell right point, his shot blocked in front. Frazier, he's looking up ice, trying to hit his man. That was Finch, it goes through his legs, and he'll just head off for the change. Thought better on the breakaway after trying to race after that one, but a missed pass. Powell for Nosoff, right wing side. He's got Shalafu on the left, two on three as he hits the line. 
Nosoff rims this one around at the left wing corner. Bad hop off of a stick. Columbus sends it down the length of the ice again. 50 seconds left to go in the Doyle minor. Black Bears trying to find their first shot of this power play. Shalafu comes in over the line, four on three. Right wing side, down into the corner. And Fitzgerald, excuse me, D'Angelo overskates that one. And this one's flipped down the ice off of the stick of Vanelli. MJ Graham racing after it. Shepard will lay it off, and he'll go all the way out to the neutral zone. Jagger Williamson finds a loose puck. Binghamton not on the same page as the goaltender there. Edgar Zoselinch, near side circle, up ahead, MJ Graham. Remember, River Dragons are shorthanded here still for another 20 seconds. MJ Graham races in, and a penalty is going to come up on him, though. High stick as Graham tried to jump around Fitzgerald, but it looks like he clipped him up high with the stick. So a brief five-on-three will be coming up for 18 seconds after this media timeout. 30 seconds in her back here on the River Dragons Broadcast Network. And maxillofacial surgeons Mark Zwicky, Lee Allen practice a traditional scope of oral and maxillofacial surgery with over 60 years of combined expertise, ranging from oral pathology to wisdom tooth removal. They perform a full range of dental implant and bone grafting procedures, as well as non-invasive surgical facial cosmetic procedures. That level of expertise is why the River Dragons trust them. Call them in Columbus at 596-1757 or in LaGrange at 884-2655. left to go here in the second. Five on three, Houston Clinic penalty kill. Houston Clinic helping the River Dragons get back to full strength. MJ Graham, two minutes for high sticking just as we went to that break. And the Black Bears, if they can strike quickly, could find a little bit of momentum in a game where they have had virtually none. Dragons seven, Black Bears one, 8.49 to go, as we said, in the Wild Animal Safari second period. I'm Zach DeBozart, only scoring to speak of in this period has come in quick succession. Two goals, 58 seconds apart. Hunter Bersani on the power play, and then Jagger Williamson, a beauty of a snipe from the high slot. They have tallied goals after the River Dragons put up five in the first period to get us to our total right now of 7-1. For what it's worth, for Black Bears fans, Nikita Ivashkin back out there on the left wing side ready for this power play. Good to see him back in action after he was hobbled a little bit from the first penalty that's on this five on three. Nosov keeps his puck in along the half wall far side to Stevens. Back for Nosov. Eight seconds left for the five on three. Powell, high slot, left circle. Stevens to Newberg in the middle, and that one went over his stick. Powell, right point, left point. Nosov back down along the goal line. Pass to the middle. And Vesh going to drive. Save made McBurney. He keeps it out along the goal line. Five on four now as Doyle's out of the box. Powell, high slot, looking for a shooting lane. Petra Antonio clogging that up. Newberg a shot on the tic-tac-toe, and McBurney sticks it away. Now there's a bad effort there by Nosov on the half wall. Two on one the other way come the Dragons. Noah Doyle, right circle, pass across. Petra Antonio sent it wide. That one hit the heel of the stick and just fluttered on him in the old open net to shoot at. Eight minutes to go in the second. 110 left in the Graham Minor. So four corners being played on the River Dragons penalty kill. It'll be dumped down, but only to the Binghamton Blue. Where Nosoff plays this one off to Powell. Powell up ahead, tipped into the zone there by Stevens. No icing. McBurney had that one, but it went over his stick. Now a weird hop off the half wall. And at the far circle, Anderson checking his man Stevens. Puck falls out of the scrum behind the net for Vanelli. Vanelli with some time. Chips this one ahead. Glove down there by Powell. He was trying to go for a home run pass. There was a man sitting at the blue line. Looked like that was Finch. Ivashkin trying to drive from the right wing circle. He's got too many sticks to navigate through. Turns over great in the corner, though. Ivashkin fires. Pad save made by McBurney off a tip. Back to the left point. Oganesov. He fires. Glove save by Bailey. Saw that one the whole way. Nicely done. Takes a whistle and settles the game down a little bit here. 25 seconds. Left to go in the Graham Minor on the Houston Clinic penalty kill. Still 7-1 Dragons with 7-13 remaining here in period two. Faceoff will come to the right of McBurney. He's fixing one of his straps there off of that last sequence. Given the time that he needs. Gets the goalie equipment back on and we're ready to go. D'Angelo to take this draw against Williamson. Williamson wins it clean. Doyle checking his man. Big hit laid on as Parker got the worst of that one along the end boards. Here's Fitzgerald right point with it. At the circle, D'Angelo. This one rimmed around. Doyle crunches another man. That one was Halesi. 
Now here's Fitzgerald to the right point. Parker knocked off of his stick. Williamson sends it ahead for Krupp. He's one-on-one -on -one with Oganesov back. Krupp trying to chip it over Oganesov to himself. MJ Graham's out of the box, though. Binghamton gets possession back. And now River Dragons three for three on the Houston Clinic penalty kill tonight. Williamson has this puck along the half walls. Columbus has held it in, but at the far circle, taken away by Oganesov. Six and a half to go here in the second. From the red line, sidesteps one man as Binghamton's in the middle of a change. Oganesov a shot, blocked away there by McBurney. Holesi at the half wall. His shot blocked by Jagger, who's in the right place at the right time. Frazier, backhand, sends this one out. MJ Graham drops it for Krupp. Krupp's three on two as he hits the line. Leaves for Williamson. Right circle Krupp trying to go back door. MJ was driving the net and the pass was behind him. Now here's Ivashkin up ahead. Ivashkin gets it there for Peterson. Ivashkin high slot. Deeks waits. Runs McBurney out of space. But then it hits the bar and goes out. There's a loose glove on the ice. Looks like it belongs to one of the Dragons. It's Adam Vanelli who's lost his right glove. He'll chip this one down ice. A race here, and Finch, oh, excuse me, Anderson tried to do a jump at the last second to get ahead of Nosoff, but to no avail. Binghamton will get the icing call with 5.52 left to go here in the seconds. Well, good news is Vanelli's allowed to get his glove. McBurney, again, fiddling with the strap on his left pad. Not sure what's going on there. Could also be trying to buy some time, let's be honest. But he's been looking at that for the last couple of stoppages. We'll tend to side with the player in that instance. Newberg to take this draw against Jagger. Jagger will win it. And Frazier from beneath his own goal line, rims it out, hits the stanchion weird. Does it have the legs for icing? Darling taking a creative route, and he took it creatively enough to get the icing call. Another icing. 5.43 now left to go here in period two. Faceoff will come to the right of McBurney. That's where Binghamton opts to put it once again. Newberg, Williamson. Again, Williamson with the win along the goal line. Frejot trying to get it out. He took a big hit from that one. Columbus can't get it out. Shot from Oganesov. Glove save McBurney. Excuse me, that was Peterson. And Peterson got lit up right there. I think it was Vanelli. Or was it Frejot? I don't know. There is a meeting chest to chest between those two. And boy, oh boy. 7 to 1 game. 534 to go in the second. That's got a recipe for some danger. Things could get a little spicy as we get ready for the third here in a couple of minutes. Shots on goal right now, 26 to 18 in favor of Columbus on the Heckler and Coke shot counter. Heckler and Coke, why own a copy when you can own the real thing? Face off once again to the right of McBurney. Bersani gets ready to take this one against D'Angelo. False start, and D'Angelo is going to get waved, so Yellowney is going to come in to take it. Bersani wins it into the corner boards. Ozelinch is tied up by a couple of Black Bears. Grade will vulture it out for Columbus. Petra Antonio puts that one hard off the stick of Austin Doe. He's racing after this one, gets in front of EJ Darling, and has it first in the corner. Doe gets checked there, tries to play it up the wall. Binghamton reads it, can't chip it to get out. D'Angelo plays it through the middle, and it's slapped back into the zone by Petra Antonio. 5-10, left to go here in the second. Dragons 7, Black Bears 1, big hit put on behind the net. Oslinch holds in left point. Doe with it left circle at the goal line. Bersani to Doe in a pad save made by Shepard. Petra Antonio was looking for the tight angle. Bersani circle to circle, he scores! Ripped it top left corner, a snowman on the board! 8-1, Columbus! I mean, just how many ways can you say it? This River Dragons team and that line, Bersani, Doe, Petra, Antonio, you think they like playing together or what? Each guy on that line has two goals tonight. Dragons eight, Black Bears one. Mr. Dana Barker, I hope you're not sick of being on air here on the network. We're about to hear from you again. Maybe not. Center ice wave there for Dalton Anderson. He'll be tossed, and Levi Armstrong will come in. Now we'll drop the puck, and here's Dana. He shoots! 
Sonny from Petra Antonio and Doe. How many times have we said those combination of names this weekend? They are hot as you can be, and it's 8-1 Dragons. Schmidt ties up with his man, and in front of his own bench, dumps it in. Armstrong reaches a stick in, but Binghamton will play it out off of him. Ivashkin lays it off there for Newberg, dumps it in, and it actually hits the netting, goes out of play from the neutral zone. We'll get a draw coming up there after this media timeout. 30 seconds and we're back here on the River Dragons Broadcast Network. King Claw is one of the most popular destinations for seafood enthusiasts. King Claw is inspired by the Viet Cajun elegance of boil and bag seafood that holds all the juicy flavor of the ocean. Then we add our very own unique mixture of the best spices that take the taste to another level. We can confirm that you won't find our flavor anywhere else. We collect the freshest seafood, prepare them as you order, and we encourage you to grab your hand in the bag to enjoy the heavenly taste of our signature seafood combinations. We believe that having quality and fresh foods with friends and family is the best feeling in the world. Come open up a bag and enjoy the best seafood in town where the ultimate juiciness waits for you. Call 706-507-3845 to order. Back here at the Columbus Civic Center, 8-1 Dragons, 4-11 to go in the second. Let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. Neutral zone faceoff coming opposite the Binghamton bench. The crowd's doing the YMCA. They are into it tonight. How could you not be after what happened Friday and what's been going on here Saturday? My goodness, it's a fun time to be a River Dragons fan here in the Chattahoochee Valley. They're back underway. Croup near side boards. Chips this one up. Hits a weird spike in the ice, but MJ Graham's in on sides. Left side. Go back door. They score. Jagger Williamson guns it on the center. 9-1 Columbus. There is just no stop. There is no quit in this team. <laughs> Two goals, 59 seconds apart. Jagger Williamson, he's now got two. There's four guys on the River Dragons that have two goals. You guys know there's only three stars of the game, right? My goodness. Center ice drop. Here's Dana Barker again. He shoots. Granathan at the bottom of the circle spins away from one man, tries to drive the net. Good stick by Shepard, knocked that one away from him. Left point held in here by Anderson. His shot wide of the blocker hand. This one rims all the way around. Frazier will have to go back at this. Frazier and Vanelli play some catch in their own end. Graham off his body. He takes it. Three on two as he hits the line right wing side. MJ Graham right circle. Fires deflect off the side of the net. Another chance there. One time effort. Ozelinch. And that one got blocked in front. MJ Graham had it between his feet. Didn't realize it. He heads off frustrated for a change. Holesi tried to dodge the referee as he couldn't pick up that puck. And icing gets called out of it. And the Black Bears are not able to change with 2.58. Left to go here in the second. Nine one Dragons. And a faceoff coming to the right of Shepard. False start, and Peterson wanted to go on a rush from that far wing. He'll reset his position. Anderson ties up, eventually pushes it between his feet for the faceoff win. Ozelinch couldn't handle it, held up, and now here's Pedersen, right wing side, two on one. He fires a shot, glove save made by McBurney. Well, don't forget about Bailey McBurney when you're talking about who's having a pretty good game. Hasn't seen a whole lot of pucks, but he has been dominant with that glove. 247 
to go here in the second. Dragons, nine. Black Bears, one. We remarked before this game, these two teams were tied at third in the FPHL standings. Winner of this would find themselves in that chase to try and catch the top two of Watertown and Danbury, and Columbus has decidedly said that chaser is going to be us. Armstrong tries to wave at a puck, inadvertently took his own man Finch out of the play there. This one dumped into the zone, delayed off sides. Columbus can't grab it. Here comes Binghamton the other way, passes out of the range of Ivashkin. Now Ozelinch on the near side circle. Armstrong got a touch on that. He'll race after it. No icing. It gets waved off. Didn't even have the gas to get to the goal line. Armstrong with it in the corner. Plays it away from Darling. Oganesov pinches a man into the boards. That's Austin Dull, one of four different River Dragons currently on hat trick watch. Tied up in the corner. Doe trying to vulture it out. So too is Newberg. It's a two on two battle in front of the goal line in the Binghamton end far side. Oganesov comes out with it. Fights through a stick check. Moves it around the half wall. Petra Antonio has it here. He fends off a check, stays on his feet. Left point, Brad Nolan fakes the shot. Petra Antonio hash marks with it now on the near side. Back to the right point. Doyle a blast wide of the blocker hand. This one rims itself around. Nolan from behind the net. Bersani trying to fend off Darling. He will succeed. Drops it back on the cycle. Doe had it in the feet. Pinballs around some bodies. Held in right point. Good job. Dixie doodling around one. Doyle shot. Blocked in front. Couple of dragons down. Look out. There's a chance for Binghamton the other way. Good pinch on the play there by Brad Nolan. But then Ivashkin gets around him. Chips through another. Tries to play it through McBurney. And he fought that one off. Ivashkin couldn't settle the puck. He just sort of flicked his stick at it. Got some good chip on it. But Bailey McBurney fights it off with a glove hand. Keeps this game 9-1. to one. Petra Antonio chips it out to center. Oganesov retreating into his own end, looking for a passing lane, and finds it. Leads it ahead to D'Angelo. One minute left to go here in the Wild Animal Safari second period. D'Angelo's shot. That one blocked in front by Nolan. This one rimmed around. Doyle puts a check onto a man as it reverses back around to the near side. 50 seconds left to go in the period. Jay Krupp involved in a battle. He kicks the puck out of that scrum. Yellow knee works it down deeper underneath the goal line. Doyle clashes sticks. Puck's loose in the far circle. Yellow knee played it up to the left point. Nobody there for the Black Bears. And down the ice it goes. Half a minute left to play here in the second. Nosoff sends it ahead. Peterson with it here. Two on two as he hits the line. Jens Peterson a shot. Great glove save McBurney. Try and try as you like. The Binghamton Black Bears think they've got a read on the glove hand of Paley McBurney, and he has consistently flashed that leather. Another dandy right there with 23.7 left to go here in period two. 9-1, Dragons lead it. Williamson directing a little traffic with his wingers. Takes the draw against Stevens. Stevens ordered to square up. Stevens pushed it ahead of Williamson there, then lost his footing. This one rims itself around. MJ Graham on the far wall, played it off of Peterson, and it will go down into the Binghamton end. Quickly played back, cross ice. Stevens trying to get around Frejot, pass to the middle. Good tie up, Vanelli, backhand effort. A save made by McBurney. Saw that one around a body as Holesi got a little crafty on the backhand, but McBurney keeps it where it's at. 9 1, 7.4 to go here in the second. Face off to the left of McBurney. 7.4 to go in the second. Stevens wins it. Columbus takes the way with anticipation. Krupp chips that one down. Graham in a race here with Fitzgerald. He just plays it off the corner boards, and that'll do it. 40 minutes are in the books. Dragons just all over the Black Bears tonight. 9-1, they lead it. We get ready for the third period, but first, the McDonald's second remission report. Starting up after this on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Network. If you're looking for quality dental work, look no further than Largeman Dental in Columbus, the River Dragons trusted oral care provider. Largeman Dental provides cleaning services, restorative work, cosmetics, prosthetics, and Invisalign braces too. Dr. Largeman has over 19 years of clinical experiences in all phases of dentistry and holds memberships in four different esteemed dental societies. Set your next appointment by calling 706-322-6581 or visit them online at largemandental.com. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like... 
Well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola a journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Is that the sound of an ooey, gooey, cheesy, crunchy slice of P-I-Z-Z-A? <laughs> Obviously. But as good as that sounds, we think it can get even better. Oh, yeah, that's the sound of a freshly opened, fizz-filled Pepsi. The only thing that can take this flavor medley of crunchy dough, mouth-watering cheese and savory sauce to the next level. How about another bite? Pepsi and pizza sound like a match made in heaven and taste even better. Pizza, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. An injury can be a game changer. That's why Houston Sports Medicine Team provides urgent ortho care, Saturday morning injury clinics during hockey season, and an emergency room at Jack Houston Memorial Hospital. An injury can be a game changer, and immediate evaluation and care can be a game changer too. For more information, go to Houston.com or call 706-324-6661. Looking to bring the whole crew out to a game? Group nights are for you. Groups of 10 or more get special ticket pricing and exclusive merchandise and experience add-ons that will make your game at the Civic Center a night to remember. For more information on group rates and packages, visit rdragons.com slash tickets or call our ticketing manager at 706-940-0476. Ask about all the great perks we can provide your group. Work friends, family functions, there's no group too big for us to handle. But it starts by visiting rdragons.com slash tickets. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons, nine. Black Bears, one. My goodness, what a... <laughs> I got to tell you, I, I was expecting a good game out of the Columbus River Dragons off of the momentum they had with five unanswered goals coming back from three down in the third period last night. I couldn't have expected this. Even the most optimistic River Dragons fans in the world I don't think could have imagined 9-1 through 40 minutes of play. Still in the third period to go. Hopefully it doesn't get uh, too ugly between these two teams. I think, uh, you know, if you really think back to the Watertown weekend when the River Dragons had to travel to New York, it's almost a uh, reverse situation in some way for the Binghamton Black Bears. Had the long travel, had a very good game Friday night, but unfortunately for them, coughed up the lead and took away no points from Friday and here on Saturday. I mean, just getting shellacked, just like the River Dragons did against the Wolves. Friday night played a good game, but didn't come away with any points. And then Saturday night, scoreline got a little ugly. Weird how those storylines seem to parallel each other. Chuck a puck is going on down at center ice. Let's uh, let's start it up with the scoring summary. I guess it's been. Uh, it's been a busy one on the score sheet. Point night just about here for the River Dragons. Though let's be honest, one main line has been getting a lot of those points. It's the Bersani, Doe, and Petra Antonio line. Second period started up with Bersani. A power play goal, 7.55 into the second. Frazier, he picked up the only assist. Jagger Williamson then would find the back of the net just 58 seconds later. As he and J, he, J. Krupp and MJ Graham, that's a very familiar combination that is all of a sudden picking up some steam here in the late stages of this one. They would combine again at 16.03. Sandwiched in between those two Williamson goals, another Bersani goal. Petra Antonio and Armstrong with the assist. So second period goes Bersani, Williamson, Bersani, Williamson. And based off of what we had in the first period of play, Petra Antonio with two goals, Doe with two goals, those two guys each with two, MJ Graham, he's got one. That's how the River Dragons have nine. You got four guys with two goals and only three stars of the game at the end of the night. Oof, that's going to be a tough decision. Right now, the special teams battle looks like this. 
River Dragons one for two on the Georgia Power power play, that Bersani goal, the one we mentioned, and three for three on the Houston Clinic penalty kill. Also out shooting the Black Bears 30 to 22 for the game. That is a second period total in favor of Columbus, but only just 15 to 13. All right, let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we take a look around the FPHL. It's been an exciting day here. It's an exciting games elsewhere, too. We should have a final from Carolina and Port Huron. They were back and forth on that one. Let's see what happened there around the FPHL. Up next on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Network. At the Country Inn and Suites by Radisson, you'll enjoy comfortable accommodations close to Columbus State University, Fort Benning, and of course, the River Dragons games. Conveniently located at 1720 Fountain Court in Columbus, you'll be minutes away from all your favorite Columbus destinations. Free high-speed Wi-Fi and hot breakfast always available too. So whether you're staying for business or for pleasure, make your next stay in Columbus a comfortable one at the official hotel partner of the River Dragons. Country Inn and Suites by Radisson. Let's Shred Away, a division of the Overby Company, take care of all your document shredding needs. We can design a custom shredding program for your business today. No need to purchase equipment, no maintenance expenses, no need to prepare records for destruction, increase employee productivity, increase security, no worry. Was it really destroyed? Right now, all new customers can receive 10% off. Shred Away, a division of the Overby Company, locally owned and operated in downtown Columbus. That's Shred Away, 706-577-9668. Stay up to date with everything Columbus River Dragons by following the team on social media. Stay in the know with all the team news on Facebook and Instagram. Get live in-game updates via Twitter. And of course, catch every game on the YouTube page. Following is easy. Search at C underscore River Dragons on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. It's never been easier to stay in the loop with your favorite hockey team. So what's stopping you? Drop us a fun comment or send us a message. And we may just feature you on the feeds. That's C underscore River Dragons on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons 9, Black Bears 1. It's still a little surreal to say as we're through 40 minutes of play on the McDonald's second intermission report. The next home game where you can see the River Dragons is also a McDonald's 4 for 48 night. P's old family in the Chattahoochee Valley area McDonald's bring you a 4 for 48 ticket deal that cannot be beat. Four tickets to the game, four hats, and four coupons. Good for a combo meal at any of your Chattahoochee Valley area McDonald's. Next game, December 18th, coming up against the Carolina Thunderbirds. Also, Ugly Sweater Night, where the McDonald's group, along with Q1073, have partnered up to bring us some Ugly Sweater jerseys. Those will be online on the Dash app uh, coming up early next week, or in about a couple of days, actually. The team will be wearing those for two games, Friday night in Biloxi, taking on Carolina in another neutral site game, and then Saturday here at home at the Civic Center Center. That's also when the Dash auction will end. So make sure you keep your eyes on your favorite players. Bid early, bid often, and claim your fa favorite player's jersey by the time the game is over on Saturday night. That's the Dash app for the jerseys. And thanks to McDonald's and Q1073 for bringing us the ugly sweater jerseys and the 4 for 48 deal you can get to come watch those jerseys in action all along the way. Whew, that was a big combo read right there. How about we do another one for Zelmo Zippin on our look around the FPHL. Zelmo is the official fuel partner of the Columbus River Dragons. We have got games in Carolina and in Watertown. We should have a final in Winston-Salem, and in fact, we do. Only thing that had really changed since we last left it, an empty netter with two seconds left from Jacob Schnapp who is back from a loan in Quad City earlier, or excuse me, at the end of last month. Jacob Schnapp gets the empty netter. Carolina seals it off 5-3. They get the victory, and they get all three points. So they split the weekend with Port Huron, but do end up taking six out of the nine after surviving on Friday and holding Port Huron at arm's distance here on Saturday night. Had a pretty good fight. Cade Lambden and Everett Thompson late stages in the second period as well. Might want to take a look at that over on the YouTube page. Of course, after you get done with this one between Binghamton and Columbus, where the River Dragons lead 9-1 to one with 20 minutes to go. Also 20 minutes left to go over in Watertown. The Wolves hosting the Delaware Thunder right now. 3-1, the Wolves lead the Thunder. Watertown took a 3-0 lead, 4-11 into the second with Alexander Jameev. 
But then Delaware got one back with Brandon Lucchesi at the 16-18 mark. Again, 20 minutes left to play. Shots just about even in that one, 28-26 in favor of Watertown. And a very clean game, too. There are two penalties to speak of, a trip for Delaware in the first and a delay of game for Watertown in the second. After that, clean as you like. Heck of a game we're seeing right now in Watertown. Again, Delaware, remember, still looking for their first win on the year. Watertown, they are trying to extend their lead atop the FPHL standings where them and Danbury are starting to run away just a little bit. But Binghamton and Columbus here, each sitting at 513. And obviously, if this result holds, Columbus will draw themselves closer to Danbury. So the River Dragons would hope to make that a little three-team pod fighting through the month of December for supremacy. Watertown and Danbury trying to get themselves away in the goal difference and points percentage tell you that much but it's still in the first half of the season the games can be pretty volatile in terms of that metric now that you look around the fbhl brought to you by zelmo zippin zelmo's fueling life's passion there is one midweek game to speak of uh in coming up next week thursday december 16th port huron is at danbury and that actually starts up a three and three all three games happening at the danbury ice arena but it's on a thursday friday saturday as opposed to Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Quick peek at the Southern Professional Hockey League on the Southern Hockey Scoreboard. There's a final in Macon, and the Mayhem have come away with a big two points against the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs, 4-2. They win it on the back of three third-period goals, Cody Rogers and then two from Tyler Becker in very close succession. 19 seconds apart, Tyler Becker at 10:42 and 11:01 gave Macon the lead and an insurance goal to go with. As again, the Mayhem win 4-2. to two. Uh, Matt O'Day and Mac Jansen each had assists in the game in terms of former River Dragons we might be taking a peek at in that one. Late stages of the second, under two minutes to go in the middle frame. Huntsville 2, Evansville 1. Havoc looking for some big road points there. Birmingham and Vermilion County are tied 1-all with 8.40 left to go in period two there in Danville. Quad City has taken a 1-0 lead over Pensacola. 8.51 left to go in the second period over at the Tax Slayer Center. And Knoxville up on the road, 2-0. Early stages of the second, 17 minutes left to go there. The Quad City Storm uh, game. Do not see anybody factoring in on the goal. However, how about this for a blast from the past? It's not Sean Coon in net for Pensacola. It is former River Dragon Cody Karpinski. So both Pensacola Ice Flyers goaltenders right now with ties back to the River Dragons in some way. Interesting how that stuff seems to sort of go. That's the Southern Hockey scoreboard. Hey, the Zamboni's out on the ice, and we see Santa Claus riding along with our Zamboni driver tonight. Hey, we're having some fun here at the Civic Center. You should come down and have some fun with us too Saturday night. That is the next time the River Dragons will be at home a week from now, taking on the Carolina Thunderbirds. And tickets available at the Civic Center box office or on Ticketmaster. Ugly sweater night, four for 48 night. So many different reasons. Why aren't you? Why aren't you getting your tickets yet? Come on, get on down here. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we get ourselves ready for the Houston Clinic third period. After this, on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. This is Roadhouse. We're famous for our hand-cut steaks, fall-off-the-bone ribs, made-from-scratch sides, ice-cold beer, and our irresistible fresh-baked bread. We take great care in everything we prepare, serve with big smiles at a great value. Visit us at 2970 North Lake Parkway in Columbus or call ahead seating at 706-323-6616. Curbside takeout available, too. We're proud to be your hometown favorite and are always focused on providing legendary food and legendary service. Texas Roadhouse. The Chattahoots' favorite place for spirits in the valley is John Emerald Distilling Company in Opelika. Conveniently located in beautiful downtown Opelika, they're open Monday through Saturday for tours, tasting, and bottle sales. Not in Opelika? No problem. From Birmingham to Columbus, there's plenty of places where John Emerald originals are sold. Check out some of their favorite recipes at johnemerylddistilling.com and give them a follow on social media at JED Spirits on Twitter and Instagram progress. It's the belief that your life should be easier, that life should be fun, and that the best is yet to come. With us, you have a provider who pours everything into bringing progress home. And it's not just some big name in a far away glass tower. That provider is here. That provider is Beam. With local service and faster internet, the only place you're going is forward. And we're taking you there. Progress. Your Beam. Your way. 
It's River Dragon season, and it's time to get out to a game. Visit Ticketmaster or the Civic Center box office to purchase tickets to the next game or any game left this season. Visit rdragons.com to check the schedule and stay up to date with everything River Dragons hockey. The defending Ignite Cup champions are looking to keep their winning ways, and you can be part of the best atmosphere in the FBHL to help make it happen. Purchase tickets online on Ticketmaster or skip the fees and visit the Columbus Civic Center box office during normal business hours. Get up and get loud, Columbus. The River Dragons are ready to roar. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. Dragons 9, Black Bears 1 through 40 minutes of play. We're on the McDonald's second intermission report. Santa Claus riding around in the Zamboni that has about one or two passes left on it. Another big crowd here at the Civic Center. I'm assuming Chuckapuck might have been sold out because uh, they had a lot of them on the ice. And uh, I had heard this weekend that... Uh, some fans here at the Civic Center were getting a little upset, a little ornery at times because the chuck -a puck was running out. Well, I've been told we're ordering more. So maybe the second edition might go even longer in future. Who knows? But, hey, you got to do what the people demand. If they're coming out, if they want to throw those chuck -a pucks who are we to deny them as the crowd here gets themselves back into their seats and ready here in a couple of minutes for the Houston Clinic third period. Again, Four different two-goal scorers for the River Dragons. Josh Petrantonio was the first to get two. Then Austin Doe had two before the first period ended. MJ Graham and Nikita Ivashkin, each of the two number eights, also tallied one in that first period of play. And then Hunter Bersani and Jagger Williamson alternated goals down the stretch in the second period. So Bersani, Williamson, Doe, and Petrantonio, each with two goals. Who will get their hat trick? Will anybody get their hat trick? And 9 1, you kind of think both teams might be playing to say, all right, let's get out of here. Let's not get too many injuries. And especially for Binghamton, who I know have a very long bus ride back home, uh, they should be, you know, probably looking forward to that. But hey, obviously, you know, you're going to come out, be a professional, play your game, maybe try and find some points for yourself. River Dragons will certainly play hard in front of their home fans. And for Binghamton, good news for them. They have no midweek games, but they are on the road again next weekend. So, uh, they're going to want to turn that road record around. If this result holds, which we would expect it to, Columbus would keep up a very good home record. They're 5-1-1 one, and one. coming into today's game here on Columbus Civic Center Ice. 20 minutes away from making that 6-1-1. One, and one. Santa Claus is pumping up the crowd here. He's saying, I can't hear you. That's a, that's a Santa Claus move I haven't seen very often, but hey, you got to appreciate it. The crowd's having a good time. And again, you could be having a good time out here with us coming up on saturday night a week from now we got the carolina thunderbirds in town you know that's always fun to see the two southern rivals going at it a week before christmas do you think they'll be on their best behavior knowing santa's watching i don't know we'll have to see but after the thunderbirds picked up a big win you know they're trying to climb the standings as well tickets available civic center box office or on ticketmaster to get yourself out to that game on saturday night all right with that zamboni's on its last pass that'll be good enough for the McDonald's second intermission report, we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're ready to go for the call of the Houston Clinic third period after this on the Columbus River Dragons Radio Network. In 1999, Watley Convenience Stores opened its first Zelmo Zip-In. Our first store was in Leesburg, Georgia, and followed quickly by our second store in the Columbus, Phoenix City area in 2000. Since then, the brand has grown to include 11 stores in the Chattahoochee Valley and southwest Georgia. Zelmo's is an anchor in the communities it operates in. Our managers, employees, and vendors are all an integral part of the neighborhoods and communities we serve. We are proud to call these areas home and plan to continue growing with and serving the community of West Georgia and East Alabama. Zelmo's, fueling life's passions. If you're looking for quality dental work, look no further than Largeman Dental in Columbus, the River Dragons' trusted oral care provider. Largeman Dental provides cleaning services, restorative work, cosmetics, prosthetics, and Invisalign braces too. Dr. Largeman has over 19 years of clinical experiences in all phases of dentistry and holds memberships in four different esteemed dental societies. Set your next appointment by calling 706-322-6581 or visit them online at largemandental.com. Looking to update 
that hockey game day wardrobe? The best place to do that is to visit the online home for all River Dragons licensed apparel, rdragonsmerch.com. With new designs coming out all the time and special promotional and sale offers always live, there's always a reason to check back to the site and score some new gear. Plus, lots of fun souvenirs and other knickknacks that make great gifts for all sorts of occasions. So get there to rdragonsmerch.com, the official store for all team licensed apparel. That's rdragonsmerch.com. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. River Dragons and Black Bears out on the ice to start this Houston Clinic third period of play. Dragons nine, Black Bears one. Bailey McBurney warms up the crease to our left. The Dragons will go left to right across your radio dial. Black jerseys, the all black outlook with gray numbers, teal trim, black helmets and pants. They go left to right. McBurney 21 saves on 22 shots for himself in this one. Over to our right. Joe Shepard is back between the pipes. Right now, he's got 11 saves on 15 shots. His counterpart, Harley White, who started today's game, he didn't fare much better in the first. 10 saves on 15 shots. Shepard and the Black Bears go right to left across the radio dial in the white jerseys. Sash Binghamton in green across the chest. Black helmets and secondaries with green numbers. They will go right to left. Crowd's trying to get the wave started up here in Columbus. That lets you know what time it is here as the third period is about to start. 9-1. Dragons. Bersani against Newberg on this draw. We are underway here in the Houston Clinic third period. The line of Petrantonio, Doe, and Bersani out to start every one of those forwards on a hat trick watch. Petrantonio from underneath the goal line. Pass deflected away from a Binghamton stick and Parker with it behind the net gives it up to Powell. Powell off the near boards. No soft with it here. Long stretch pass. Hits a man at the red line. That was Parker. No icing as they say he had the red. In the corner. This one found by Petrantonio. Frazier works it out. Chips it out to center. And we give it to Powell. D to D across in his own line. No soft. Looking ahead with this one. Takes a weird touch but falls for Ivashkin as he's in over the line. In the slot. Pass. And knocked away there is Holesi as he was stood up by Vanelli in the slot. Holesi red one on the far wall. Frejo chips this one off the glass. Krupp racing after this one. Krupp with this in the left wing corner. Chased there and Darling gets a step in front of him and gloves it out of the air. On the far side. This one sent out by Peterson. Right on the path of Holesi. Two on one as he hits the line. Holesi left circle. Pass across. Rebound was knocked away there by Grade. It was dangerously sitting but Grade got across first before Holesi could try and tap it in. Now in the slot, Troop knocks one away, but it goes into the far corner for Stevens. Holesi playing that one over the net to the right wing circle. Stevens a backhand across and nobody home in the slot in a white jersey. Here's Grade from the red line. He'll flip this one in. MJ Graham racing after it first in the corner. Fitzgerald lays a check onto him. Behind the net, Fitzgerald stays with it and passes over to Holesi near side. 18-30. Left to go here in the third. Dragons a big 9-1. MJ Graham with it and his own blue line. Gets the wheels turning up ice. Can he find another goal to be on Hattrick Watch as well? No. It is poked off of his stick by Fitzgerald as he raced in. Krupp had the red line, dumped it in. Columbus with the quick touch up on the delayed offsides. Left wing side, Yellowney, nice dipsy doodle around one and plays it to the path of D'Angelo. D'Angelo, left wing circle, bottom of the circle shot, went wide across the crease. McBurney got contacted a little bit there. Binghamton dumps that one in, delayed offsides. McBurney sticks it away. Armstrong drops it back for Doyle. And now it's sent up ahead by Nolan. That one takes a tip at center, so no icing here. Ogan Asoff from behind the net. Rims this one around. Doyle has it at the red line. Doyle chips that one in. That one goes to the far corner. It'll be collected by Nosoff. End-to-end -end action like we've seen a lot in this weekend series between the two teams. Though this one just milking off time as this one's gotten way out of hand. 9-1. Columbus currently leads it here at home. Anderson chips this one, right wing side, Armstrong racing after it, Oganesoff pinches him off along the wall, right circle, Vanelli a shot, pad save made, and Shepard rushes over to his left and covers that one up for a whistle. 17-18 left to go here in the second period, and hey, Mike V was giving some shout outs earlier today, we got to give a shout out from up top, I'm going to say hi to Vinny Latini listening in in New Jersey. And uh, what some of the executives tell me here, future River Dragon star. How you doing, Vinny? Happy you're enjoying tonight's game. 9-1, Columbus leads it here at home. Why don't we get you down here for a game, Vinny? Love to have you. 
On the far circle. This one backhanded out by Oganesov. Checked into the boards there by Bersani. A long dump down is on net, and Shepard will have to put a glove on it and take a whistle. 17.04 left to go here in the third. Dragons 9, Black Bears 1. 32-23, to 23. shots on goal right now in favor of Columbus. Shepard with some conversations for the stripes, both referee and linesman around him. And now he will get this draw coming up to his left. Not sure what that conversation was about. 17.04 to go here in regulation. Tied up. Binghamton wins the defensive zone draw. Flipped up, not out. Petra Antonio fakes the shot. Now fires. Pad save, and it's underneath the skate of Shepard. What a reach with that left side of his body. Petra Antonio double clutch to try and open up some space. He thought he had it low. And good stretch there by Shepard. Makes the save. Denies Petro his hat trick. And Austin Doe, he was sitting on it looking for a rebound. He could have had a tap in for his second straight hat trick. Face off to the right of Shepard. Graham has it along the goal line. Hits off of a body and had to be patted away by Shepard. In the corner, Krupp feeds Williamson. Had to reach behind himself to get it. Now plays it back to the circles. Krupp can't get around his man. Tying him up there. That was Stevens. Olesi backhands this one to center. Gloved out of the air by Grade. Grade on the backhand. Played off the far wall. Pedersen a shot. Olesi was too late to try and get a tip on it in the slot. Behind the net it goes. Jake Grade will take his time. Skate this one out to the near side. Looking for a passing lane. He'll backhand chip it up the wall. MJ Graham's got it in stride. Graham now moving over to the left wing side. Using the angles. Using the space. Jagger Williamson. He gets torn down right there. Crowd wants a call. But listen. This late in the game, that one would have been a little soft. Right wing circle, Holesi a shot, and that one goes high over the shoulder and over the bar. Hits the glass, Krupp tries to chip it out. It'll fall back for Doyle at the red line. He'll just backhand it in, and Columbus will change behind this. Four minutes gone here in the third. Fitzgerald, he tried to get around a man. Big check laid on there by Anderson. Now this one will be sent into the zone by Yellow Knee. McBurney comes out, sticks that one into the corner. Now to the middle, left circle. Joe getting around a man with Shalafu, but then he couldn't get the puck back on his stick. McBurney still had fallen for the deke, but he could not put wood on it. It's still 9-1. Shalafu on the far wall, cycles it down. D'Angelo pins his man into the wall. That's Noah Doyle. Armstrong, he'll fire a check in onto somebody. That's Fitzgerald. Now here's Finch with this puck. Crowd getting a little antsy as we're getting a pushing and shoving. D'Angelo and Schmidt. Are we going to get one? No. Meanwhile, pass to the slot. Doyle. Knocks it away before it could find a Binghamton body. Nolan rims this one around. It's about all we've been missing today in terms of the River Dragons bingo sheet as a fight. Justin Schmidt was asking D'Angelo if he wanted to go. D'Angelo politely declined. Can't say I necessarily blame him, though we get a hit. D'Angelo lays one in on Schmidt, and Armstrong's going to feed him there along the bench. This is going to get the crowd going. We're going to get some whistles. I think Armstrong put one cross check in too many. He's going to go. Both referees' arms are in the air. And Armstrong is clutching and grabbing. And I think that's Shalafu. And this is what you wondered. 9-1 game with a whole period to play. Was there going to be some ugliness? Was there going to be some rough stuff? On sportsmanlike conduct, the signal given to Levi Armstrong. 14.57 to go in the third. We get our media timeout. 30 seconds, and we're back here on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Injury can be a game changer. That's why Houston Sports Medicine Team provides urgent ortho care, Saturday morning injury clinics during hockey season, and an emergency room at Jack Houston Memorial Hospital. An injury can be a game changer, and immediate evaluation and care can be a game changer too. For more information, go to Houston.com or call 706-324-6661. 
We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. Fans, the Columbus River Dragons and Fort Benning Harley-Davidson have teamed up for a 50K giveaway at a River Dragons hockey game this season. Simply text FBWIN to 55678 before March 13th to be entered for a chance to shoot from center ice and win $50,000. For full rules and contest details, stop into Fort Benning Harley-Davidson on Williams Road or visit FortBenningHD.com. $50,000 could be yours this season, but only if you text to enter now. That's F-B-W-I-N to 55678. Good luck. We'll see you in March. Media timeout over. Levi Armstrong, two minutes on sportsmanlike conduct. And the River Dragons are back on the Houston Clinic penalty kill for the fourth time tonight. Three for three so far in this game. Face-off coming to the left of McBurney. Petra Antonio wins that one. Bottom of the circles picked up by the defense, and that one sent up by Frejo and just out as Nosoff couldn't hold the left point. Powell here for Newberg. Now to Nosoff in his own zone. Newberg sends a stretch pass ahead. Ivashkin was offsides but touched it in an onsides position. Didn't matter. Petra Antonio got it, dumped it down. Now here's a chance on the far wall as the River Dragons crowd getting excited. They're trying to cheer on every chance here, looking maybe if they want to get a hat trick. Already thrown some teddy bears out of the ice. I'm sure a hat or two they wouldn't mind tossing as well. Petra Antonio on the near side board. Chips around a man. Finch going to race after this one, but Powell quite a few steps ahead of him. He'll get to it. 112 left to go here in the Houston Clinic penalty kill. Levi Armstrong for unsportsmanlike conduct. Powell, good one-touch pass. Finds Ivashkin, two on three as he gets the line. Passes left wing side. Stevens has some space and a good glove save. Made there by McBurney, who ranged to his left to make it. This one chipped out down to the Binghamton Blue. No soft, flips this one. Ivashkin with the glove and a hand pass as Stevens will touch it. And we get the whistle. 13.47 left to go here in the third. 51 ticks remaining in Armstrong's minor. 9-1 Dragons, four different two-goal scorers for Columbus. Petra Antonio, Doe, Bersani, and Williamson. MJ Graham also has one. The lone tally for Binghamton comes from the usual suspect. Nikita Ivashkin is 19th on the year in this just 14 games for Binghamton. Just an absurd pace that he is at nearly a goal and a half per game. Columbus wins the draw shorthanded. MJ Graham had it from the shotgun position. Now he skates it behind the net. He's with it on the near side corner boards now. He's just playing keep away by himself. Eventually worked it too far away behind the net, and Powell takes it over. 35 seconds remaining in the Houston Clinic penalty kill. Here come the Black Bears back the other way. Holesi dumps this one in. Big check laid on him there by Oslinch as he closed up the gap he was trying to run through. No soft. Tied up at the left point by MJ Graham. Held in by Binghamton. Brett Parker works it across. One touch pass. Peterson gets it back to the circle for Holesi. Holesi on the half wall to Powell. Center point, a shot wide of the glove hand. Hits the boards behind the net. Rimmed around, weird hop off the stanchion. But eventually, Jagger Williamson finds it in the slot and sends it down ice. Then a weird bounce off the corner boards, and Shepard wasn't exactly ready for there. Two seconds and one, though. He lays it off to his defense. Armstrong is out of the box. 0 oh for 4, or excuse me, 4 for 4. On the Houston Clinic penalty kill tonight are the Dragons. Now here's a chance. Backhand side of the net. Oh, that's a high hit there on Shepard. And Armstrong's going to get it from a couple of the Black Bears. That one was chipped up high. Armstrong looked like he might have been trying to go for the puck. Lost sight of where the goaltender was and just ran into him up high. And that's tough right there. Shepard is down in the crease. Arm went up immediately. I'll be honest with you, very surprised. And... The Binghamton Black Bears, I feel like, have every right to go after Levi Armstrong. They're not. So you got to respect the discipline of that team. Because two or three Bears immediately tied up Armstrong, but that lets you know they don't want this to turn into a gong show. However, Shepard down still. And high stick the call there against Levi as he will return to the penalty box. Trainer Zach Romig out on the ice, taking a look at Shepard. They're going to displace the goal to give him some space to be able to look at him. Harley White had already been pulled from this game in the first period. You have to wonder if he might now have to come back in. Shepard's down on a knee getting looked at. Referees are discussing what to do about this. Meanwhile, captains Petra Antonio... And Newberg await the decision from the referees. Two minutes up on the board against Armstrong here. 
And really no punches thrown off of the gatherings. You'd have to imagine that would be it. Shepard, man, he's as tough as you like. He's reaching for his blocker and his glove, looking like he's going to try and stay in this one. I tell you, not much has gone right for Binghamton in this one. You got a tough cookie there in net, staying in on that one after that was a uh, unfortunate high hit as Armstrong just got a little too zoned in on the puck and realize his positioning on the ice. Will that spur some craziness? Will that turn this into a bit of a Donnybrook? I don't know. We have 12.46 left in regulation to find out. Offensive zone draw coming up here for Binghamton. They'll put it to McBurney's left. Five on four here for the Black Bears. Houston Clinic penalty kill. Houston Clinic helping the River Dragons get back to full strength. River Dragons four for four so far tonight. Petra Antonio v. Newberg on the draw. Newberg lifts a leg and wins it, but Doe takes it away with anticipation. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one back on Powell. Doe, left circle, fires glove. Save made there by Shepard. For Binghamton fan, that's good to see. Shepard being alert and knocking that one down nicely. Newberg dumps this one down in front of the Columbus bench. Powell has stick lifted by Doyle, and it hopped up off a stick clash into the Black Bears bench. And we get a whistle. And check out old school. 20 seconds gone in the Armstrong high sticking penalty. 12.25 left to go here in the third. Dragons still lead at 9-1. No scoring to speak of here in this third period. Williamson dragging at that puck with Newberg. Jagger will eventually win it. Nolan shoots it down only to the Binghamton blue line. Powell with a little D to D to Nosov. And now up ahead, Newberg's in over the line. Three on three. Good stick clash right at the line by Noah Doyle. And we'll go back into the neutral zone. No soft with this left wing side. He gets run into the boards there by Doyle again with a big stand up at the blue line. Crowd appreciating that on the PK as Nolan dumps it down 200 feet. 110 left to go here in the Armstrong minor. Powell from behind the net. Pushes that one over at the red line. Sent across, Newberg finds Nosov in over the line. Powell just holds it in along the blue. A pass to the right point. Stevens has it here. Stevens down to Newberg at the hash marks. Backhand back for Stevens. Over for Powell, left point. Left circle finds Nosov. Couple of sticks tapping for Binghamton. They want it, circle to circle. Stevens for Newberg in the middle. And he had his stick clash, no shot attempt there. Ive Ashkin, double team there in the corner, works itself around. Stevens to Newberg, right circle, good block in front. Jagger Williamson and MJ Graham's going to go on a little run. He's going to try and get around Powell again. MJ Graham left circle, does, fires, and a bad save made right there by Shepard. Graham will rim this one down underneath the goal line. 20 seconds left to go here in the Armstrong minor. Nosov takes his time behind the net, gets a little space as Anderson does a flyby. River Dragons in good defensive posture. Moving this over, left wing side to D'Angelo. D'Angelo from the red line, sends that one in. Quickly knocked back out by the River Dragons. Bears have to wait. Armstrong's out of the box. Five for five on the Houston Clinic penalty kill tonight are the Dragons. Here's Anderson left wing side, just in over the line. He'll dump it down only to the goal line far side. Fitzgerald gets laid into big time there by Armstrong. Now up the near side wing, here comes D'Angelo. Ten and a half left to go here in the third. D'Angelo tries to drive the net, gets around. Ozil just shot just wide along the ice, past that right pad of McBurney, but couldn't find it inside the post. Gray ties up his man. Now Ozilinch will come in and seal someone up. Two on two battle, near side corner. Yellowney comes out with it. Right circle, Fitzgerald fires, deflect, they score! Looks like somebody got a tip in front. Is that bounced funny? Is that a Vashkin again? No, looks like that's Shalafu. So Shalafu will get the goal. He leads the line on down. 10-10 to go in the third. And it's now 9-2. Well, that was one of the things we talked about in Watertown when the River Dragons were in this sort of situation on the other side of things. Just go out, try and win the period. River Dragons did play a very good period of hockey at that time. And we're seeing that from Binghamton. They're playing discipline. They are trying to attack in the ways that they have, you know, fit into their game plan. And right there, rewarded with the goal. And if that's their goal... In the win the final 20 minutes? Well, they're up 1-0 right now, but 9-2 for the game. Columbus leads it. We are back underway. Bersani wins the center ice draw. Doyle has it on the near side. Petra Antonio, a little chip, and Fitzgerald will dump that one in from the red line. 
Behind the net, Nolan on a backhand, feeds his captain, near side circle. Goes off the glass. Bersani trying to go after this. Baseball batted out of the air and into the zone for Oganesov. And that one will be covered by McBurney, and we get a whistle and immediate timeout. 9.47 left to go here in the third. River Dragons lead at 9-2 here on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Supply is a world leader in development, manufacturing, and distribution of composite reinforcement materials for any and all projects you might have. Headquartered right here in Phoenix City, Vectorply prides itself on providing superior and timely customer service for all their customers' inquiries. No project is too big or too small for Vectorply. For more information on what they can do for you and your project, visit Vectorply.com. That's V-E-C-T-O-R-P-L-Y.com. And get started on your next big project today. We are back here at the Columbus Civic Center. 9.47 left to go in the third. Dragons 9, Black Bears 2. Last goal in this game was just scored by Binghamton. For those of you keeping score with us at home, 9.50 mark here of the Houston Clinic third period. Binghamton's Mikhail Shalafu out of Alberta gets his second goal of the season. Assist to Larry Yellowney and Eric Oganesoff. We get a false start, and a redrop will occur. I guess that one wasn't dropped fairly. Faceoff coming to the right of McBurney. Williamson will win that into the near side boards. Krupp flips it right into the path of MJ Graham. He turns himself up ice. Graham stood up at the blue line there. Doyle will hold in at the left point, pushes it down deeper into the corner. Stevens sends this one around to the near side wall. Holesi will have it here, and it will go all the way to the red line. Nolan, he gets run into there, but he holds his ground just enough to keep that puck in possession and eventually dumped in by Binghamton as they have to hold themselves on sides. Williamson from behind the net drops it back off. Brad Nolan from behind. 9.08 left to go here in the third. Dragons lead by seven here on home ice. Noah Doyle wanted to go up the far wall. He was headed off at the pass by Stevens. He knocks down Holesi on a counter check. Held in, left point, shot coming in from Fitzgerald. Knocked down in the slot. Doyle played it off of MJ Graham. It's still in the zone here for Binghamton. Brad Nolan takes a big check there from Peterson. Nolan pushing him down into the corner boards. Referee will come over and take a look at that, but both arms stay down right now. 8.40 left to go here in the third. And Columbus having a hard time getting out of their own end. Now they do dump it down, but icing going on here, so Columbus will not be able to change. 8.31 to go in the third. Binghamton will have the offensive zone draw, and the faceoff will come to the left of McBurney. Newberg to take the draw against Williamson. And MJ Graham. MJ Graham was just told to go off the ice. I thought it was a stick issue, but I guess they say Levi Armstrong was supposed to be on. Oh, that's why. Armstrong's going to go ahead and fight Darling. Here we go. They're squared up near the near side circle. Darling tries to reach in. Now they're both grappling, looking in for an angle. Armstrong fires the first right. He misses, but he's got a hold of the visor. Now he rips the helmet off. Armstrong comes in with a big right hook. Now Darling trying to come in on the inside, and Armstrong knocks him down. Two big right hooks, and he ends up flipping Darling there. Big belt motion, and the crowd loves it. was a bit of an Aikido flip it looked like right there off the punch for Levi Armstrong because that was a heck of a scrap 831 to go in the third hey you know I was wondering if Levi Armstrong was even on the ice if that was an icing call whatever it might be but hey we found out the reason why and now look how Justin Schmidt's on the ice 831 to go in the third Always got to keep your head up when Schmitty's out there. 
Newberg wins the draw. No soft. Center point. Save made there by McBurney. Saw it from distance. And we get another whistle. 8.26 to go here in the third. Dragons nine. Black Bears two. Just had a pretty good fight. Home crowd appreciated Levi Armstrong's effort there against Will Darling. Binghamton wins another draw. Ivashkin tries to play that one to the middle. Knocked away. Too many Columbus bodies in front. Vanelli will flip this one to center and at the red line, no soft recollects. This one chipped into the zone there off the stick of Newberg. McBurney will slow it up. Here's Finch on the near side circle. Plays that one. Too saucy of a pass on that open left wing and Powell has it all the way back in his own end. Crowd getting loud with the Let's Go Dragons chant. They've had a lot to cheer about tonight. Dragons in front, 9-2. Anderson, left circle, his shot. Ramps up off a stick. And then go out of play, into the mesh. And we will get a whistle. 7.54 to go in period three. 9-2 Dragons. Shots on goal right now, 36-25 in favor of Columbus. Usually you don't talk about shooting percentage too much, but even at the rate it's at right now, Dragons are shooting 25%. Nine goals on 36 shots. Levi Armstrong has been escorted to the tunnel. Not sure if he's picked up a 10 from inside the penalty box, if he needs some repairs, an equipment issue, whatever it might be. But the crowd definitely loves to serenade him one more time as he heads off to the tunnel to our left. And Zach Romig, the trainer, will actually head back down with him. So that lets us know it might be a uh, case where he might need some repairs. I don't know what it could be unless Knuckle made contact with Helmet in a bad way. Hopefully Armstrong will be all right. Petra Antonio on the far side wall. Down into the corner it goes. Hits a weird part of the kick plate. Nearly popped out in the slot. Fitzgerald was money on it and then moves it to the near corner where he slammed into the wall. Two on two battle here in the near side corner on the zone to our right. Puck moves up the wall. Grade tries to pinch, holds in right point. Not once, but twice. Taking some pressure there from Stevens. Grade just does hold it in. It's in the feet of Logan Asoff, And now he's going to be able to come away with it and spin back for a D to D pass. Backhand flipped into the zone by Fitzgerald. A bouncer, and McBurney didn't like that. Had to fight it off a little bit. Settled it with the stick, though. And he will take a whistle as he gloves it. 7.14 left to go here in the third. 9-2. Dragons lead it here at the Civic Center. All but a formality at this point. When you talk about needing a goal a minute, usually you say, okay, that's with two minutes left to go and you pull your netminder. Not usually with 7.14 left to go in regulation. Defensive zone draw, won by Columbus, but look out. Backhand effort. Shalafu is looking for his second. And that one goes high onto the glass. Shalafu now from behind the net. Has it on the forehand. Pass up to the left point. Oganes off. He fires a shot deflected. And I think Nolan ended up getting the block on that one all told. Shalafu right point. Hits the stanchion weird. Nolan on the goal line. Rims this one around back to the near side. Oganes off. Checked there by MJ Graham. Shalafu left wing circle. Plays that one across the slot. Oganes off and MJ Graham have some words for each other out of that scrum. Meanwhile still playing hockey. Right circle shot. Ooh. And that one caught somebody up high. Looked like that was Brad Nolan. McBurney's going to glove it at the side of the net. And now Doyle and D'Angelo will get to know each other a little bit in front of the boards. Everyone's going to calm down a bit. MJ Graham and Ogan Asoff still jawing at each other, but hostilities seem to have calmed down between those two, I would say, likely combatants. MJ Graham definitely not afraid of anybody in any color jersey. Ogan Asoff seems like he's got some good size to go in with MJ, but they both head off to their respective benches. 6.34 left to go here in the third. Dragons nine, Black Bears two. Bersani wins the draw to the corner. We are back underway. Vanelli trying to spin away from a check. Good stick lift there by Newberg. Tried to play it to the middle. Too many bodies in front. No soft a shot. Deflect off the bar and out. No, it's in. Oh, they say it hit the back bar and went in. A deflection had that pop up off the ice. It hit something and went straight down. The referees are going to say back bar just inside the corner. Crowd's not going to like it. And the only man heading over to the bench for taps is Nikita Ivashkin. If that's his tip and goal, that's his 20th of the year. A milestone for the season. 
in a night the Black Bears would like to forget. But right now, having a little bit of success in this period, something to perhaps feel good about heading onto the bus. It is officially Ivashkin from Nosov, and it sounded like Newberg. Couldn't catch the last one, but yes, indeed. 13-46 mark of the third. Ivashkin, his second goal of the game, and he now has 20 goals on the season. Five goals this weekend. He was matched by Austin Doe, who's also got five in his two-game set. We're back underway. Bersani dumps this one down into the Binghamton end, 9-3. River Dragons continue to lead. Black Bears lead the period, though, 2-0, which you have to commend them for. Coming out, being pros, still playing hockey, despite the scoreline being lopsided. Logan Asoff works this back into his own end. Puck too high off the stick of Ivashkin. Frazier dumps this one in. It gets rimmed around behind the net. It'll collect collected by Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald on the near side for Holesi. Holesi trying to feed it ahead. And Peterson was double teamed by both River Dragons defensemen, Ozelinch and Grade, and icing is on as that one was not played in from the red line, say the linesman. 5-12 left to go here in the third. While we have a moment, let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. Face-off coming to the left of Shepard. This one hits weird, hits weird off the kick plate, nearly loose at the side of the net for the Dragons. They're taking advantage of this. Finch trying to start a cycle down low. Anderson, he hugs his man. Fitzgerald loose in the slot there for a moment, pops up into the air. And that one gloved down by Fitzgerald. No hand pass. He's in his own zone. Holesi can clear it. Grade will dump that one back in. Oganesov took it before it reached his net miter. He'll go behind his own net for some support. Fitzgerald, backhand, Finch pinching on the play. It hit him, but it fell right back for the Binghamton defenseman. Now here's Oganesov with speed ahead. Three on three as he hits the line. Right wing side, Oganesov with it, going behind the net with it. Doyle lines him up for a crunching hit. Peterson left circle, shot deflected, loose in the slot. spin around Mahalesi, blocked in front there by Nolan. This one can't get out. Good hold in there by Peterson. Shot coming in, Oganesov left circle, and a save made McBurney. We get our final media timeout of the day. 4.22 left to go in the third. Dragons 9, Binghamton 3. Conclusion of this one after this on the River Dragons Radio Network. Radio Network. An injury can be a game changer. That's why Houston Sports Medicine Team provides urgent ortho care, Saturday morning injury clinics during hockey season, and an emergency room at Jack Houston Memorial Hospital. An injury can be a game changer. And immediate evaluation and care can be a game changer too. For more information, go to Houston.com or call 4.22 left to go here in the third. All but a formality, but Binghamton is battling back for some pride. 9-3, Dragons lead, but the Black Bears have the last two goals in this one. Both scored in this third period. Levi Armstrong has emerged from the tunnel. Trainer fixed whatever he needed to, and the crowd continues to celebrate his work from earlier in this period when he fought with Will Darling. My apologies, by the way, to the Darling family who might have been listening, was told I might have... Uh, Mixed up Darling's name with EJ, uh, who is not here today. Another player for Binghamton, but right next to each other in terms of the numerical roster. I apologize for that. Frejo ties up his man. Shalafu behind the net. Centering effort, and Yellowney got denied by McBurney. Right circle, an effort, and Williamson on the backhand. Can't get it out. He was tied up. D'Angelo checked into the wall there by Ozelinch. Checked that was Frejo, and Vanelli now works it out. Graham, backhand, can't send it out, popped up high into the air, gloved down Shalafu, no hand pass, he retouched it, yellow knee shot, stick save made from the top of the left wing circle. Under four minutes left to go here in the third, Dragons lead at 9-3, just looking to milk out the rest of this clock. Yellow knee over the red line, deflects this one into the zone, McBurney rims this one around, racing after it here is D'Angelo, 
Good sidestep, gets around one man, puts it down into the corner though. And now Frejot moves it ahead for MJ Graham. He's going to have some speed right wing, but he's all alone as River Dragons are in the midst of a change. Graham had it knocked off of his stick. Yellow knee flips it out to center. First on it there is Newberg. Too hard of a pass into the path of Shalafu. And now here's Columbus. Jay Krupp with some speed. Two on one if he hustles. Good pass across in the diving effort. But MJ Graham couldn't get there. He whistles one in from a tight angle. Hits the side of the net. Goes to the far wall. Binghamton tries a stretch pass. Yellow knee knocked away at the red line by Grade. Now with some speed. Shalafu in. And a stick save made by McBurney. Springy backboards there. And McBurney picks it up off the ice. He will glove it as it was at the side of the cage. 3.04 left to go here in third, and we get our combatants out. Levi Armstrong and Will Darling allowed to return to their respective benches, and the crowd will applaud them one more time. Levi Armstrong asks for more. The crowd obliges. Faceoff will come to the right of McBurney. Bersani set to take this draw here against Newberg. Bersani wins it. Ozelinch rims it around. Austin Doe with it on the far corner. He flips this one out to center. A bouncer. Ogunesov will have it in his own slot. Petrantonio bothering him for the puck. This is the hat trick line, if you will. All three forwards with two goals. They're hungry for it. Maybe seeing if they can't get one. Left wing side. This one dumped in by Parker. Behind the net, Doyle chops at his man. Parker finds the loose puck to the slot. Too many Black Bears actually there as both Ivashkin and Fitzgerald wanted it. McBurney makes a save, seeing it through a screen, and the rebound was cleared away, and so too was Newberg as he got knocked down to the ice. Two and a half left to play here in the third. Fitzgerald on the backhand. Petrantonio put it back at him on the attempted outlet. And now Petrantonio heads off for the change. Fitzgerald spins back at his own circle. Now he moves it over near side, nearly bobbled it. Finch takes it back at the red line, dumps it in. Let's go, Dragons. The chant here for Dana Barker. 2-5 left to go in the third. Dana's had a busy day for more reasons than one. We'll tell you that here at the next stoppage. Finch dumps that one in, left wing side, and Columbus happy to just hem Binghamton in. Armstrong, ooh, that was ugly right there, but it was actually because Stevens pushed Armstrong into the back of the net, and the back of the net came back and bit Shepard. I know Armstrong hasn't exactly been the Binghamton Black Bears' best friend, but you got to have some awareness if you're Stevens there. As you're behind your own net, you don't push a guy into the back of it. And Shepard just got clocked in the back of the head by the crossbar. That could not have felt good. One fifty-two left to go in the third. Our story about Dana Barker, he's had a pretty busy day. This is the third game he's done PA for today because the Columbus High School Hockey Program, of course, still repping the Columbus Cottonmouths, had a double header today, a 10.30 and a 2.30 game. Some of the River Dragons who got here early as that was a box-out hit from Doyle on Holesi that got the crowd up in arms. There was a doubleheader hockey game here for the Columbus Cottonmouths. Doyle with his stick lifted, flipped out by Peterson. And uh, some of the guys came in a little early, got to see the second game, which finished in an 8-8 tie. And they were wondering, man, are we going to see this many goals in our game? Turns out the answer was pretty close. Shout out to Dana Barker, who's been a trooper all day here at the arena. Holetzi, left circle. That one goes wide of the crease on McBurney. 117 left to go here in the third. Holetzi from behind the net, backhand effort in front, and Newberg couldn't put it towards net. Dangerous in the slot. Too many black jerseys, though, and it's eventually cleared away. Vanelli goes with MJ Graham on this rush. Graham goes through the legs of one. Nice move. Oohs and ahs from the crowd, centering across. No one home. Off the near side wall, Krupp waves his stick there at Newberg with less than a minute to go here in the Houston Clinic third period. Crowd getting to their feet, making some noise for what's been an unreal effort for Columbus. Vanelli's shot. That one bounced around in the slot. Now Krupp has it at the right wing circle. Pass top of the left wing. Williamson works it down for Graham at the bottom. Back for Jagger at the left wing hash marks. Graham in the corner looking for something in the slot. Nothing available. Left point, Vanelli. Right point, top of the right circle. Krupp fakes the windup, forgot the puck. Now brings it back, side of the net. Frejot to Graham. What a save, Shepard. Rebound, score. 10-3, Dragons hit the double digits, 28.8 left to go in the game. 
Well, Dragons aren't even going down the line, so I don't know who got the final touch on that one. Oh, sure, we'll hear it from Dana Barker, which will just about close out this game and put another double-digit effort in the annals of the Columbus River Dragons history books. 10-3. They lead it here with 28.8 to go in the third. Shepard made a heck of a save and then just too much chaos around him. Puck went in behind him, 10-3. Here's Dana one more time. Adam Vanelli, Jay Krupp on MJ Cram's second of the game. Five different two goal scorers in a 10-3 win as Jagger Williamson does a lap around his own net. Bailey McBurney salutes the crowd and here comes the team to celebrate the win with him. Just an offensive onslaught we saw in this one. 12 goals on Friday, 13 on Saturday. A 10-3 win for Columbus to sweep the weekend. Levi Armstrong, he's doing some good work. He comes over, taps a couple of the Black Bears after some of the antics that had happened there in that third period and mostly looking out for Shepard as he goes and taps him. That was a tough one here at the end of that. Right? Or, excuse me, Joe Shepard and Harley White, both with a very tough night, and the Black Bears will lick their wounds, head on back home, and get ready for a road set against the Delaware Thunder. The River Dragons clad in black salute the crowd. About 2,500 here at the Civic Center who roar back in approval. 10-3. Dragons win it. Take the three points tonight. Take six points on the weekend. And now it's time for the Chattabruchi Post Game Show. That comes up after this on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. It's network. An injury can be a game changer. That's why Houston Sports Medicine Team provides urgent ortho care, Saturday morning injury clinics during hockey season, and an emergency room at Jack Houston Memorial Hospital. An injury can be a game changer, and immediate evaluation and care can be a game changer too. For more information, go to Houston.com or call 706-324-6661. Welcome to the Chattabruchi. That's right, the Chattabruchi Southern Brew House is the official post-game hangout of the Columbus River Dragons, serving their exclusive River Dragon Red Ale on all game nights, located just a mile and a half from the Civic Center at 1301 6th Avenue. There's no excuse not to get out with some friends and enjoy the night with some quality craft brews. Chattabruchi Southern Brew House is locally and veteran-owned and offers live music from 6 to 10 on Friday and Saturday nights. Make sure to follow them on social media for all the latest events. The King Claw is one of the most popular destinations for seafood enthusiasts. King Claw is inspired by the Viet Cajun elegance of boil and bag seafood that holds all the juicy flavor of the ocean. Then we add our very own unique mixture of the best spices that take the taste to another level. We can confirm that you won't find our flavor anywhere else. We collect the freshest seafood, prepare them as you order, and we encourage you to grab your hand in the bag to enjoy the heavenly taste of our signature seafood combinations. We believe that having quality and fresh foods with friends and family is the best feeling in the world. Come open up a bag and enjoy the best seafood in town where the ultimate juiciness waits for you. Call 706-507-3845 to order. 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 It's time for the Chattabruchi Post Game Show on the River Dragons Broadcast Network. <laughs> Tonight's show is brought to you by Cypress Partners, Podcast 706, Chattabruchi Southern Brew House, The Jersey Shop, BioLife Plasma, and PMB Broadcasting. Now with a recap of tonight's action, here's Zach DeBozart. Thank you very much, Brian Thomas. Welcome in, Chattabruchi Post Game Show. Here's Dana Barker one more time. Josh Josh Petrantonio just named first star of the game here tonight. Listen to some of these gaudy stat lines. Petrantonio, first star, two goals, three assists for five points. Hunter Bersani, two goals, two assists for four points. And then Jagger Williamson, he gets third star of the game, two goals for him. Also, I mean, you got to give shout outs because Austin Doe and MJ Graham, they each had two goals and a 10 3 win. They don't get a sniff at the stars. Uh, how about Jay Krupp, a couple of assists, Paul Frejo, a couple of assists, 
I mean, you look on down, there were only five River Dragon skaters that were without points. Doyle, Ozelinch, Schmidt, Finch, and Anderson, and most of those guys are defensemen, and, you know, defensive defensemen at that. So the top half was going, the offense was going, and Josh Petrantonio finishing up his on-ice interview, giving the crowd a little bit of a salute, saying thank you so much for coming on out. Man, what a game. This was here. If you thought last night was memorable, tonight was memorable as well, but for a very different reason. Just utter domination from Columbus from the very get-go. Scoring the first four goals in the game. When you go back to last night, that's a run of 9 nothing. The River Dragons were on. Two from Petra Antonio, one from Doe, one from Graham. Nikita Ivashkin got one back in quick succession, 30 seconds after the Graham goal. Then 11 seconds later, Austin Doe squashed any bit of hope Binghamton seemingly had, made it 5-1 11 seconds later, as we said. And that was the score. Heading into the locker room, and then from there, Columbus poured it on some more. Uh, middle stages to the end part of the second period. Bersani and Williamson traded goals. It went Hunter Bersani power play. Williamson, Bersani, and Williamson again. Interesting call and response. Bersani would score, and then about a minute or so later, Williamson would. 58 seconds left, or 58 seconds apart in the middle stages, and 59 seconds apart in the end stages with about four or so minutes left to go. Uh, in the third period, Binghamton actually ends up winning the period 2-1. to one. First, Mikhail Shalafu gets a goal, 9.50 left to go, or 9.50 into the third period. Then Nikita Ivashkin, another goal for him, second of the game, fifth of the weekend, 20 on the season in this, the 14th game for the Binghamton Black Bears. 13.46 mark, he made it 9-3. And then at the very end, MJ Graham gets in on the two-goal party. 19.31 mark of the third. Man, five guys with two goals on one team. And then Nikita Ivashkin made it six two-goal scorers that we saw here on the ice. My goodness, what a game we just saw. What a weekend of hockey between Columbus and Binghamton. It's the first time these two teams have matched up for two games. I mean, very impressive, uh, very uh, memorable, and it's going to make uh, the series in April when we have to travel up to the Vision Veterans Memorial Arena very interesting. I'm sure there will be plenty of back Black Bears who will remember uh, this game, how they felt, and will want to take it to Columbus, but they got a long time to wait. Again, that series is in early April when it comes back out. Three stars of the game, as we mentioned, all going Columbus's way, Petrantonio, Bersani, and Williamson. But look, you had your fair share of choices. Again, Graham and Doe each had two goals. Paul Frejot had another multi-assist game. Uh, heck, even uh, Bailey McBurney. I know the third period wasn't too kind to him, but he finished with over 900 in the save percentage again as he picks up a win to even up his record at 2-2-1 and one on the year. Let's take a break. When we come back, more Chattabruchi post game show with a look around the league after this on the Columbus River Dragons broadcast network. network. The Jersey Shop specializes in screen printing, embroidery, direct to garment printing, and vinyl heat press lettering and numbering. We provide custom t shirts for any occasion, reunions, parties, you name it. We have a graphic designer on staff to help create the logos or graphics necessary to make your shirts unique. Here we pride ourselves in being able to deliver orders of any size at low competitive cost with no minimum quantity required to order. That's why the River Dragons trust us for all their uniform needs. Call the Jersey Shop in Columbus today, 706-565-4242. Today, more than ever, you can rely on the trustworthy technicians at Midas for your car's needs. From scheduled maintenance to brake repairs to oil changes, suspension work, and more, our technicians are known for their work and their word that your car will be fixed in the best way possible. Stop in your neighborhood Midas today with two locations in Columbus at the corner of 13th Street and Veterans just up the road from the Columbus Civic Center and the other off Manchester Expressway. Midas Total Car Care, proud sponsors of the River Dragons. Trust the Midas Touch. Before you know it, the weather will get warmer and baseball will be right around the corner. So book your summer weekends early by purchasing a Flight Club membership with the Columbus Chattahoots. Flight Club members receive tickets to every home game at Golden Park as the Hoots try and go back to the championship series in 2022. Plus, more awesome perks for all of our members. Visit GoHoots.com to get started on securing your membership for the 2022 Sunbelt Baseball League season. Or call the offices at 706-507-4625. Bye. 
Back here on the Chattarucci Post Game Show after the River Dragons win 10-3 over the Binghamton Black Bears. Another double-digit game you can etch into the franchise history for the Columbus River Dragons. Had a couple of those in the first year. I don't think we had any last season in the uh, COVID shortened from the start season as opposed to the COVID shortened at the end season. That's when we had the couple of double digit efforts. We'd have to really dig back and figure it out, but either way, it's the first one of this season, that's for sure. 10 3, River Dragons win. Two goals apiece from Petrantonio, Doe, Bersani, Williamson, and MJ Graham. Also, two goals, Nikita Ivashkin and Mikhail Shalafu. He's the only one with one goal. After that, everyone either had zero or two. So Shalafu was somewhere in the middle uh, between those two parties. Time to take a look around the FPHL. Brought to you by Zelmo Zippin, Zelmo's fueling life's passions. We've got finals all around the league. First, Carolina. They had an early start. 605 puck drop. Thunderbirds win 5 to 3. An empty net goal from Daniel Martin, not Jacob Schnapp. Uh, they, they corrected that goal over to Martin. And Gus Ford, he had a heck of a weekend for himself. He had a hat trick last night. He had five goals in the last two games. Not sure what he did in game number one of that three game set that was Thursday through Saturday for Port Huron. But, uh, man. Goal scorers were out. Offense was a plenty this weekend. Eight goals in Carolina Port here on obviously 13 here in Columbus. And we take a look over in Watertown. The Delaware Thunder do fall to the Watertown Wolves by a score of 6-3. to three. Uh, Delaware actually tied up the game. Third period, 7.55 mark. Brandon Lucchesi, and then again Lucchesi on the power play, 10-11. It was 3-3, but talk about a backbreaker. 17 seconds after Lucchesi ties it up, Brandon Day goes down the ice, scores, makes it 4-3. couple of empty netters, Rocco DiCostanzo, and then Justin Coachman shorthanded with the empty net, make it 6-3 Watertown. That makes the scoreline a little uglier uh, than it needed to be. But uh, you know what? Give credit. Brandon Lucchesi, who does pick up third star of the game with that hat trick. Cole McKechnie and Alexander Jameyev stars one and two with two-point efforts for themselves. Watertown, another big three points, extending their lead atop the standings. Columbus passes Binghamton. They are now solidly in third. Carolina passes Port Huron, and they right now are in fifth. But Binghamton will drop underneath 500, which is where Carolina sits. So without knowing the standings, or knowing the exact standings with points percentage because games are still in the process of finalized, Watertown will still be first, extending their lead ahead of Danbury, who is idle. Columbus jumps Binghamton into third. Carolina jumps Binghamton as well, who sits at 500. Binghamton being under 500 will fall to fifth. Port Huron sixth. And again, Delaware still looking for their first win of the season with only one point will be in seventh. Let you look around the FPHL. Next Fed action comes up Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Port Huron at Danbury to start a 3 and 3 set at the Danbury Ice Arena. Zelmo Zippin fueling life's passions. Southern Hockey Scoreboard had a full five games to talk about here in the SP. Macon defeats Roanoke 4-2 at home. Huntsville just won. That game just went final in Evansville. 3-1 the Havoc take a big two points on the road. Vermilion County 4, Birmingham 2 with seven minutes left to go in third. Pensacola 3, Quad City 2, seven minutes left to go in the third period there as well. Knoxville 4, Peoria 3, 12 minutes left in the third there. And the Fayetteville Marksmen, they were off today. There is some Sunday action in the SP. Pensacola at Quad City, 310 East, 210 Central. And then some midweek action, actually plenty of it, two games to speak of. Fayetteville at Macon, Huntsville at Pensacola. Again, both those games coming up on Thursday. That's your Southern Hockey Scoreboard. Let's take Take another break. When we come back, we get ourselves ready for the Carolina Thunderbirds, a two and two set that involves that Mississippi Coast Coliseum again. Can't wait to go see the crowd down there on the coast. We'll be in Biloxi, then we'll be in Columbus on Ugly Sweater Weekend. Tell you all about that after this on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. Welcome to the Chattabrucci. That's right, the Chattabrucci Southern Brew House is the official post-game hangout of the Columbus River Dragons, serving their exclusive River Dragon Red Ale on all game nights, located just a mile and a half from the Civic Center at 1301 6th Avenue. There's no excuse not to get out with some friends and enjoy the night with some quality craft brews. Chattabrucci Southern Brew House is locally and veteran-owned and offers live music from 6 to 10 on Friday and Saturday nights. Make sure to follow them on social media for all the latest events. Hey Columbus, have you heard of BioLife Plasma Services? It adds up. Here's how. The cash you'll earn for your time donating plasma at BioLife adds up for the things you want. And your plasma donations can add up over time to create life-changing medicine for people with rare diseases. Stop in and check us out at our new Columbus BioLife location. New donors can earn up to $300 in their first five plasma donations at BioLife. Visit BioLifeAddsUp.com to schedule an appointment today. 
prepare yourself for an unparalleled golfing experience. Co-designed by Columbus resident and 1987 Masters winner Larry Mize, Maple Ridge Golf Course is a pleasure for golfers of any skill level to play. Test your accuracy with our fairways, water hazards, and sand traps. We have everything you need to challenge yourself and improve your game. Memberships available year-round by calling 706-569-0966 or book a tee time by visiting golfmapleridge.com. Looking to bring the whole crew out to a game? Group nights are for you. Groups of 10 or more get special ticket pricing and exclusive merchandise and experience add-ons that will make your game at the Civic Center a night to remember. For more information on group rates and packages, visit rdragons.com slash tickets or call our ticketing manager at 706-940-0476. Ask about all the great perks we can provide your group. Work friends, family functions, there's no group too big for us to handle. But it starts by visiting rdragons.com slash tickets. One more time here on the Chattabruchi postgame show. 10-3. River Dragons win this one big over the Binghamton Black Bears. Take all six points. Now move themselves into the sole possession of third place in the FPHL standings. Watertown, Danbury, Columbus right now your top three. As we turn the calendar into mid-December and get ready for some uh, basically pre-Christmas games with the league having Christmas Eve and Christmas Day off despite that being Friday and Saturday. Uh, these upcoming games this weekend are going to be the last chance to really set your standings at that Christmas window and you know decide what you want, all your statistics for who's in the playoffs at what point. But all I know is right now the River Dragons are playing some very good hockey and they are ready for their final games before Christmas. Christmas coming up against the Carolina Thunderbirds. It's a Friday and Saturday set. First starting up in Biloxi, another neutral site game hosted by the FPHL. Carolina, the designated home team. Columbus will be coming in wearing their ugly sweater jerseys. Check those on Dash early parts of the week as uh, it'll be a lot of fun to get that one going up. And then uh, we also got the game Saturday night at the Columbus Civic Center here. So we go from the Mississippi Coast Coliseum to the Columbus Civic Center. But this time we only play two games on the weekend, uh, both against Carolina, both in ugly sweater jerseys, again, available on the Dash app. And that game on Saturday is also a 4 for 48 deal. Visit rdragons.com slash MCD deal, MCD hyphen deal for more details. Or call the offices 706-507-4625 on how to get your group out here on a 4 for 48. A big thanks as well to all of the crew who are here with us. First, big thanks to Levi Armstrong, our Inside the Lair pregame show guest. Uh, he did factor in on a point, so we're on a two-game point streak with that. Happy to see that for us. Uh, big thanks to Mike V, who was with us along for the early part of the ride. And a big thanks to everybody here in the crew, Xavier Demarius. We've also got Stephen Pierce. We have got Chris Kaufman. We've got Brandon Lane. We've got Jamil Hawkins. I know Javaris Harris is around here somewhere. I think he's down running some mics and running some cameras to be picked back up. Great work from all of you guys down there on the crew. Oh, and Eli Hardegree as well. Can't forget him down there on Jumbotron camera. Taylor Blackwell doing everything on the game upside. Allison Holiday, who is running social media behind the scenes. And a shout out to Elise Bradford who is not here today. Uh, I think we slacked a little bit on social media. Uh, couldn't cover for her as well. Not enough bodies, but hats off to Elise who graduated today from Auburn University. Congratulations to you, Elise. Can't wait to see you on Saturday where we have the Carolina Thunderbirds here in town but before that we've got a game in Biloxi on Friday that's the next games on record for the River Dragons next time you'll hear from us it will be on the John Emerald Distilling Coaches Show Tuesday night 6 to 7 p.m. right here on these same radio stations boy you think the guys are going to be talking about after this one who the heck do we even select for a player guest maybe we'll just run player guests the entire show and just tell us about the weekend tell us about the goals you scored because man there were a lot to cover. 7-5 on Friday, 10-3 here on Saturday. 17 goals to cover in just two games. What an offensive display the River Dragons shown. Now set in third place in the FPHL standings. And we look ahead again to Carolina just before Christmas. Big thanks to everybody listening in as part of your Saturday night. I'm Zach DeBozart, the voice of the River Dragons. We wish you all a fun good night and cannot wait to see you on Tuesday for the Coaches Show. One more time, your final score, Columbus 10, Binghamton 3 here on the Columbus River Dragons Broadcast Network. You've been listening to the Chattabruchi Post Game Show on the River Dragons Broadcast Network.
Tonight's show was brought to you by Cypress Partners, Podcast 706, Chattabrucci Southern Brew House, The Jersey Shop, BioLife Plasma, and PMB Broadcasting. All rights to this broadcast are reserved by the Columbus River Dragons and PMB Broadcasting for the private use of their audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution of the descriptions or accounts of this game are expressly prohibited without the written consent of Ignite Sports and Entertainment and PMB Broadcasting. This has been a presentation of the Columbus 